The Stoics, throughout their long and meaningful lives, mastered not only the art of self-control and resilience, but also the intricate psychology of human relationships. They understood that the real power lies in subtle influence, and the key to unlocking deeper connections often rests in the smallest details that most people overlook. Their timeless wisdom applies even today, especially when it comes to understanding what truly captivates women. In this special compilation, we're going to dive deep into the kind of psychological insights that will open your eyes to the mysteries of attraction and desire. Over the past week, we've uncovered some of the most shocking and powerful secrets in female psychology. From hidden moves that can trigger intense reactions to proven methods for influencing how women perceive and desire you, these videos reveal what most men are completely unaware of. We've explored techniques that not only shake a woman's ego, but also create obsession, unveiling the desires that women often keep hidden, but deeply crave to be fulfilled. If you're ready to fully immerse yourself in what makes women tick, stay with us until the very end. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share your personal stories if any of these insights have had an impact on your own experiences. The Stoics, throughout their long lives, mastered the art of understanding human nature, including the complex psychology of women. They believed that true power lies not in trying to control others, but in mastering oneself and one's interactions with the world. This ancient wisdom can be applied to modern-day situations, especially when it comes to attraction and intimacy. In today's episode, we're going to explore how to create an undeniable magnetic pull when you're sitting close to a woman so strong that 99% of girls will feel an irresistible attraction. These are not just tips on physical closeness, we're delving into the psychological and emotional aspects that make these moments so powerful. From knowing the right body language to understanding the subtle cues that drive attraction, each chapter will help you master the art of connection. Make sure to watch until the end to get the full picture, and if you find value in this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your experiences. Share your stories if you have any, and let's get started. Chapter 1. You sit close. Sitting close to a woman is far more than just narrowing the physical distance between you. It's about creating an atmosphere of intimacy that goes beyond words. The closeness you establish sets the stage for a deeper connection, one that is rooted in subtle psychological cues and non-verbal communication. When you choose to sit close, you are making a deliberate move into her personal space, which, if done correctly, can ignite a spark of attraction that words alone might not achieve. One of the most crucial aspects of sitting close is the confidence with which you do it. Confidence is key here, any sign of hesitation or nervousness can quickly ruin the moment. Women are highly attuned to the energy you project, and any uncertainty can make her feel uneasy. The Stoics, who were masters of self-control and emotional regulation, would emphasize the importance of maintaining composure in such situations. They believed that a man should be in full command of himself at all times, especially when in close proximity to someone he desires. This means being calm, collected, and in control of your body language. By sitting close with a sense of ease and assurance, you communicate that you're comfortable with intimacy, which, in turn, can make her feel more at ease and open to connecting with you. However, it's important to remember that sitting close isn't just about where you physically place yourself. It's also about how you position your body in relation to hers. Lean in slightly, just enough to suggest interest, but not so much that it feels intrusive. This slight lean can convey warmth and engagement without coming across as overly eager or desperate. Your body language should be open and relaxed, facing her, but not crowding her space. This delicate balance between closeness and respect is what makes your presence feel inviting rather than overwhelming. When done right, this can make her more receptive to your presence and more likely to engage with you on a deeper level. Additionally, sitting close allows you to pick up on her subtle cues more easily. This is where your observational skills come into play. Notice how she reacts to your proximity. Does she lean in closer, maintain eye contact, 
or perhaps play with her hair. These are all signs that she's comfortable and possibly even attracted to you. Being able to recognize these cues is essential because they will guide your next moves. If she's giving off positive signals, it's an invitation to continue building the connection. On the other hand, if she seems uncomfortable or distant, it may be a sign to give her a little more space. Another important aspect of sitting close is the opportunity it gives you to build a shared moment. The closer you are, the more you can create a sense of shared experience, whether it's watching something together, whispering a private joke, or simply feeling the warmth of each other's presence. This shared space is where connections are deepened and where the seeds of attraction are planted. By being attuned to her reactions and maintaining your composure, you can make this shared space one that she enjoys and wants to return to. Ultimately, sitting close to a woman is about more than just physical proximity, it's about creating a space where intimacy can flourish. It's about being confident, respectful, and observant, allowing her to feel both intrigued and comfortable in your presence. By mastering the art of sitting close, you set the stage for a deeper connection that can lead to genuine attraction. The Stoics understood that true power comes from within, and by harnessing that inner strength, you can create powerful connections with others, including the women you desire. Chapter 2. Keep her engaged. Maintaining a woman's interest is crucial when you're sitting close. The initial proximity sets the stage, but keeping her attention requires more than just being physically near. It's about creating a dynamic interaction that captivates her. Women are naturally drawn to men who can keep their minds stimulated and their emotions engaged. The Stoics, who were experts in mastering the art of conversation and human connection, would advise that this is where you subtly show your intellectual depth and emotional intelligence. Start by guiding the conversation into topics that are interesting, but not too heavy. Light-hearted banter, intriguing questions, and shared experiences can keep the dialogue flowing and enjoyable. This isn't about impressing her with grandiose stories or trying to dominate the conversation. Instead, it's about creating a comfortable environment where she feels relaxed and eager to contribute. The more you can keep her engaged in the conversation, the more she'll associate your presence with positive emotions, which is essential in making her feel connected to you. Body language plays a vital role in keeping her engaged as well. When you're sitting close, use subtle gestures to reinforce your words. A light touch on her arm when making a point, a nod to show you're listening, or maintaining strong eye contact can enhance the connection. The Stoics believed in the power of nonverbal communication, understanding that what you don't say is often just as important as what you do say. Your body language should reflect confidence and attentiveness, showing that you are fully present in the moment with her. Listening is another key element in keeping her engaged. Women are often more attracted to men who listen attentively rather than those who just wait for their turn to speak. When she shares something, respond thoughtfully and ask follow-up questions that show you are genuinely interested. This doesn't just keep the conversation going, it makes her feel valued and understood, which can deepen the emotional connection. The Stoics would encourage you to practice active listening, as it not only builds rapport, but also demonstrates respect and empathy. As the conversation progresses, don't be afraid to inject a bit of mystery. Share interesting aspects of your life, but don't reveal everything all at once. Leave some details vague or suggest that there's more to your story than what you're sharing. This subtle play of withholding information can pique her curiosity and make her more invested in getting to know you better. Women are naturally curious creatures, and by keeping certain parts of your life under wraps, you create a sense of intrigue that draws her in. Finally, be aware of the balance between speaking and silence. Sometimes, a comfortable silence can be just as powerful as words. When you're sitting close, silence can create a moment of tension or anticipation, which can be incredibly attractive. The Stoics valued the art of silence, recognizing that it's often in these quiet moments that the deepest connections are formed. By embracing silence, 
you allow the tension to build, making the next words you say even more impactful. In summary, keeping her engaged while sitting close is about more than just conversation, it's about creating an experience that is intellectually stimulating, emotionally fulfilling, and slightly mysterious. By mastering the art of engaging her mind and emotions, you make her more invested in the interaction, increasing her attraction to you. Chapter 3. Introduce Flirtation Smoothly As you continue to keep her engaged, it's important to gradually introduce flirtation into the interaction. Flirting is an art that, when done correctly, can create a powerful connection and increase her attraction to you. However, it's crucial to approach this step with subtlety and finesse, ensuring that your advances are welcomed and reciprocated. The Stoics would advise that true confidence comes from within, and that your flotation should be a natural extension of your self-assuredness, not a forced or desperate attempt to win her over. Start by increasing the intensity of your eye contact. When you're sitting close, maintaining eye contact can create a deeper sense of intimacy and connection. Let your gaze linger a little longer than usual, and don't be afraid to let a slight smile play on your lips. This non-verbal cue is often the first step in flirtation, signaling that you're interested without saying a word. The Stoics believed in the power of subtlety, understanding that the most powerful messages are often those that are unspoken. Once you've established a comfortable level of eye contact, begin to introduce playful teasing into the conversation. Light-hearted teasing is a great way to create a fun and flirtatious atmosphere. It shows that you're confident enough to poke fun at her and yourself without taking things too seriously. The key is to keep the teasing light and never cross the line into anything that could be perceived as mean-spirited. The goal is to make her smile, laugh, and feel at ease in your company. In addition to verbal teasing, incorporate some light, casual touches. For instance, if she makes a joke or says something funny, lightly touch her arm or shoulder as you laugh. These small gestures can create a physical connection that complements the verbal one. Touch is a powerful tool in flirtation, as it can signal interest and create a sense of closeness. The Stoics, who valued human connection, would remind you to be mindful of how your touch is received. Pay attention to her body language, if she responds positively, you can continue, if she seems uncomfortable, it's important to back off and respect her boundaries. As the conversation becomes more flirtatious, you can start to introduce compliments. However, these should be specific and genuine, rather than generic or overly lavish. Compliment her on something that you genuinely appreciate, whether it's her smile, her sense of humor, or something unique you've noticed about her. Genuine compliments can make her feel special and appreciated, which is a key aspect of building attraction. Finally, as the flirtation intensifies, begin to create moments of tension. This can be done through pauses in the conversation, where you simply look at her and let the moment hang in the air. These pauses can create a sense of anticipation and excitement, making the interaction feel more charged and intimate. The Stoics understood that tension is a natural part of human interaction, and when used correctly, it can heighten emotions and deepen connections. In conclusion, introducing flirtation is about balancing confidence with subtlety, making her feel both intrigued and valued. By gradually increasing eye contact, incorporating playful teasing, and using light touches, you can create a flirtatious atmosphere that deepens the connection and makes her more attracted to you. Chapter 4. Initiate Light Touch Initiating light touch can be a powerful, non-verbal way to communicate interest and build intimacy, but it requires a delicate balance of confidence, sensitivity, and respect. Physical touch is one of the most direct ways to signal attraction, yet it must be approached with mindfulness to ensure that it enhances the connection rather than causing discomfort. The Stoics, known for their wisdom in navigating human interactions, would advise that such gestures be grounded in respect and attentiveness, ensuring that your touch is both welcomed and appreciated. The key to initiating touch lies in being attuned to the moment. 
Look for natural opportunities to make light, non-intrusive contact, such as when you're laughing together, sharing a private joke, or emphasizing a point in conversation. These moments should feel organic and unforced, aligning with the stoic principle of living in harmony with the natural flow of events. For example, when handing her a drink or showing her something on your phone, let your fingers briefly brush against hers. These small, seemingly incidental touches can help establish a sense of closeness without appearing too forward. As you begin to introduce touch, start with the lightest and briefest of contacts. A gentle brush of your fingers against hers, or a momentary touch on her hand, can convey your interest while still being subtle. The Stoics believed in the power of subtlety and the importance of measured actions. In this context, the lightness of your touch allows her to feel your interest without feeling pressured or overwhelmed. If she responds positively by smiling, maintaining eye contact, or not pulling away, this can be taken as a sign that she's comfortable and receptive to further touch. Once you've established a comfort level, you can gradually increase the frequency and intensity of your touches. Move from brief, incidental contact to more deliberate gestures, such as lightly holding her hand for a moment longer or tracing your fingers along the back of her hand. These actions should still be subtle and gentle, in line with the stoic ideal of moderation. The aim is to create a gradual progression of intimacy, allowing her to adjust to the increasing closeness at her own pace. Being mindful of her reactions is crucial at every stage. If she reciprocates your touch by holding your hand, leaning in closer, or making more physical contact herself, it's a strong indication that she's enjoying the interaction and feels comfortable with you. However, if she pulls away, tenses up, or seems uncomfortable, it's important to respect her boundaries and not push further. The Stoics emphasized the importance of self-discipline and controlling one's desires, which in this case means knowing when to ease off and give her space. It's also essential to be aware of the emotional context in which your touch occurs. Physical touch is not merely a mechanical action, it's a way of communicating your feelings and intentions. When you touch her fingers or hands, you're conveying a sense of warmth, care, and connection. The Stoics believed in the power of intention, and in this case, your intention should be to create a positive emotional experience for her, one that enhances her comfort and deepens the bond between you. Moreover, consider the timing and setting of your touch. The atmosphere around you can significantly influence how your touch is perceived. For instance, a light touch during a quiet, intimate conversation will likely have a different impact than the same touch in a more public or noisy environment. The Stoics would remind you to be mindful of the context and to ensure that your actions are appropriate to the situation. Finally, remember that initiating touch is not about rushing into physical contact, but about building a connection that feels natural and mutual. The goal is to make her feel valued and understood not to assert dominance or control. By approaching touch with thoughtfulness and care, you can create moments of genuine connection that resonate with both of you on a deeper level. In summary, initiating light touch is a delicate process that requires confidence, attentiveness, and a deep respect for her boundaries and feelings. By being mindful of the moment, starting with brief, subtle touches, and gradually increasing the intensity, you can create a sense of intimacy that deepens the connection and enhances her attraction to you. The Stoics would advise that in all things, especially in matters of the heart, one must act with wisdom, patience, and a clear intention to build something meaningful and lasting. Chapter 5. Whisper in Her Ears when you're sitting close to a woman, whispering in her ear is an incredibly intimate and effective way to create a deeper connection. The act of whispering not only brings you physically closer, but the sound of your voice so near her ear can send shivers down her spine. This technique, however, requires careful timing, delivery, and a deep understanding of the moment to ensure that it has the desired effect. The Stoics, known for their mastery of measured speech and their deep understanding of the power of words, would advise that the content and tone of what you whisper are just as important as the act itself. 
To begin with, the timing of your whisper is crucial. It should be a moment when the conversation has already established a level of comfort and closeness. Perhaps you're sharing a private joke or you want to make a comment that's meant just for her ears. This is not something to rush into. Whispering too early can feel too intimate too soon, potentially making the situation awkward. The Stoics valued patience and the ability to read the room, which in this context means waiting for the perfect moment when whispering feels natural and appropriate. It's essential to gauge the flow of the conversation and the emotional tone before leaning in. When you do decide to whisper, the content of your words is paramount. Whether you choose to share a compliment, a witty remark, or something that only the two of you understand, your words should be chosen carefully to enhance the connection and make her feel special and appreciated. The Stoics believed in the power of words to shape relationships, and this is a prime example of how that power can be wielded effectively. What you say should resonate with her on an emotional level, creating a shared moment that strengthens the bond between you. Equally important is the tone of your voice when whispering. It should be soft, warm, and inviting, creating a sense of intimacy that draws her closer. The way you say something can often have a greater impact than the content itself. A gentle, almost breathy tone can make the moment feel more personal and charged with emotion. The Stoics would advise you to be mindful of your delivery, as it can convey more than just the words themselves. Your tone should carry the weight of your feelings, subtly expressing your interest and attraction. Your body language is also a key component of the moment. As you lean into whisper, your proximity to her should feel comfortable, not invasive. The Stoics valued moderation in all things, and in this case, that means finding the right balance between closeness and respect for her personal space. Your goal is to create a moment of connection, not to make her feel crowded or uncomfortable. A slight tilt of your head, a gentle touch on her arm as you lean in, these small gestures can add layers of meaning to the whisper, making it more than just words. After you've whispered in her ear, it's essential to pay close attention to her reaction. If she smiles, laughs, or responds positively, it's a clear sign that she appreciated the gesture. This reaction indicates that she's comfortable with the level of intimacy you've introduced and is likely feeling more connected to you as a result. However, if she seems taken aback or uncomfortable, it's important to recognize this and adjust your approach accordingly. The Stoics believed in the importance of adapting to the situation, and in this case, that means being attuned to her responses and respecting her boundaries. If she seems uneasy, it's best to ease off and return to a more neutral form of conversation. The emotional context of the whisper is another critical factor. Whispering isn't just about the physical act, it's also a way to communicate emotions and deepen the emotional connection. When you whisper in her ear, you're not just making physical contact, you're also conveying a message of warmth, care and closeness. The Stoics believed in the power of intention, and in this case, your intention should be to create a positive and intimate emotional experience for her. Your whisper should make her feel cherished and understood, strengthening the emotional bond between you. Moreover, the impact of a well-timed whisper can extend beyond the immediate moment. It can create a lasting memory, a private moment that the two of you share, which she may reflect on later with a sense of fondness. This shared experience can become a touchstone in your relationship, something that reinforces the connection between you. The Stoics would appreciate the lasting impact of such moments as they understood the importance of building strong, meaningful relationships through thoughtful and deliberate actions. In addition to the initial whisper, consider the possibility of building on this moment with further whispers throughout your interaction. As the evening progresses, you can use whispering as a recurring motif, each time drawing her closer and deepening the connection. This approach can create a rhythm of intimacy, where each whisper builds on the last, gradually intensifying the bond between you. The Stoics believed in the value of consistency and perseverance, and in this case, that means consistently reinforcing the connection through your actions and words. 
In conclusion, whispering in her ear when you're sitting close is a powerful and intimate way to deepen the connection and create a memorable experience. By carefully choosing the right moment, speaking in a soft and warm tone, paying close attention to her reactions, and understanding the emotional context, you can make her feel special, appreciated, and drawn to you. This technique, when executed with confidence and sensitivity, can enhance her attraction and build a stronger, more meaningful bond between you. The Stoics would remind you that in every interaction, especially one as intimate as this, your words, tone, and intention should all work together to create a positive and lasting impact. Chapter 6. Read Her Reciprocation As you continue to build a connection through proximity, conversation, and subtle touches, it's crucial to pay close attention to how she reciprocates your advances. Reading her reciprocation correctly is key to understanding whether she's genuinely interested and comfortable with the direction the interaction is taking. The Stoics, who were keen observers of human behavior, would advise that this step requires patience, awareness, and a deep respect for her feelings and boundaries. Start by observing her body language. Is she leaning in closer to you, mirroring your movements, or maintaining eye contact? These are positive signs that she's comfortable and possibly interested in you. On the other hand, if she's pulling away, crossing her arms, or avoiding eye contact, these could be signals that she's not as comfortable or interested as you might have hoped. The Stoics believed in being attuned to the subtleties of human interaction, understanding that often, Actions speak louder than words. In addition to body language, listen to her verbal cues. Does she laugh at your jokes, respond thoughtfully to your comments, or ask you questions in return? Positive verbal responses indicate that she's engaged in the conversation and enjoys your company. However, if her responses are short, hesitant, or if she frequently changes the subject, it might suggest that she's not fully invested in the interaction. The Stoics valued clear and honest communication, and this extends to being able to read between the lines of what is said and unsaid. Reciprocation also extends to how she responds to physical touch. If you've initiated light touches or leaned in closer to whisper, how does she react? If she reciprocates with touches of her own, maintains physical closeness, or even initiates touch, these are strong indicators that she's attracted to you and comfortable with the level of intimacy. Conversely, if she pulls away or seems stiff when you touch her, it's important to respect her boundaries and refrain from pushing further. The Stoics taught the importance of moderation and self-control, and in this context, that means not forcing an interaction that isn't mutual. Another aspect to consider is the overall mood of the interaction. Is she relaxed, smiling, and enjoying herself? Or does she seem distracted, tense, or disinterested? The general vibe can give you valuable insights into whether she's reciprocating your interest or simply being polite. The Stoics believed in the importance of harmony and balance in relationships, and part of that balance is recognizing when things are naturally progressing and when they are not. Finally, be mindful of her comfort level, even if she's reciprocating your advances, it's crucial to ensure that she's genuinely comfortable and not just going along with things out of politeness. The Stoics emphasized the importance of empathy and understanding in all interactions. In this case, that means being sensitive to her needs and feelings and being willing to slow down or change course if necessary. In conclusion, reading her reciprocation is about being observant, respectful, and responsive to her signals. By paying close attention to her body language, verbal cues, and overall comfort level, you can gauge whether she's interested and comfortable, allowing you to navigate the interaction in a way that respects her boundaries and deepens the connection. Chapter 7. Take it further if there is an opportunity. If you've carefully read her signals and determined that she's reciprocating your interest, the next step is to take the interaction further if the opportunity presents itself. This is where things can potentially move from flirtation to something more intimate. However, 
It's crucial to proceed with caution and sensitivity, ensuring that any advances you make are welcomed and appreciated. The Stoics would remind you that true wisdom lies in knowing when to act and when to hold back, making sure that your actions are in harmony with the situation. The first step in taking things further is to be attuned to the moment. Look for signs that she's open to deepening the connection, such as lingering eye contact, subtle touches, or a more intimate tone in the conversation. If the atmosphere feels right, you might consider moving closer or making a bolder gesture, such as holding her hand or brushing her hair back from her face. The Stoics believed in the importance of being present and fully engaged in the moment, and this is especially true when deciding to take an interaction to the next level. Before making any significant moves, it's important to ensure that there is a clear mutual interest. Ask yourself if her actions and words have consistently shown that she's comfortable and interested in you. If there's any doubt or if her signals have been mixed, it's better to her on the side of caution. The Stoics valued prudence and self-restraint, recognizing that it's better to miss an opportunity than to risk overstepping boundaries. If the opportunity does seem right, proceed with confidence but also with care. If you decide to initiate a kiss, for example, do so slowly and gauge her response. If she responds positively, you can proceed. If she hesitates or pulls away, respect her boundaries and don't push further. The Stoics believed in the virtue of temperance, acting with moderation and understanding the limits of what is appropriate. It's also important to communicate clearly and honestly. If you're feeling a strong connection and want to take things further, it's okay to express that verbally. You might say something like, I really enjoy spending time with you, or I feel a strong connection between us. This not only clarifies your intentions, but also gives her the opportunity to express how she's feeling. The Stoics valued clarity and honesty in communication, and this is crucial when navigating intimate interactions. Finally, be prepared to accept her response, whatever it may be. If she's open to taking things further, great. If not, accept her decision gracefully and without pressure. The Stoics taught that we should focus on what is within our control, our actions and reactions, rather than trying to control the outcome. If she's not ready or interested, respect her decision and continue to treat her with kindness and respect. In conclusion, Taking it further when there's an opportunity is about balancing confidence with respect, ensuring that your actions are in harmony with her desires and comfort level. By being attuned to the moment, communicating clearly, and respecting her boundaries, you can deepen the connection in a way that feels natural and mutually satisfying. As we draw this episode to a close, it's clear that creating a strong connection with someone involves a blend of subtlety, confidence, and respect. Each of the techniques we've explored, sitting close, maintaining interest, initiating light touch, whispering in her ear, reading her responses, and knowing when to take it further, plays a crucial role in deepening your bond and enhancing attraction. The Stoics taught us that the essence of human connection lies in balance and understanding. By being mindful of these principles, you not only make meaningful connections, but also foster genuine, respectful interactions. Remember, the goal is to create an atmosphere of comfort and trust, where both you and your partner can explore the connection without pressure or discomfort. If you found these insights valuable, don't forget to watch until the end, like, and subscribe to our channel for more tips and techniques. Share your experiences and stories in the comments, how have you used these techniques in your own life? Your feedback helps us create content that resonates with you and others who are on the journey of mastering the art of connection. Thank you for joining us today. Until next time, keep embracing the art of subtlety and respect in your interactions. See you in the next episode. Throughout history, the Stoics were known for their wisdom and deep understanding of human nature, including the psychology of women. They mastered the art of controlling their emotions, remaining unshaken by the whims of others, and wielding their knowledge to gain an upper hand in relationships. In today's world, understanding these dynamics is more important than ever. 
If you want to navigate the complex world of relationships and ensure that you're in control, not being controlled, then you need to know the secrets that only 1% of men have mastered. These are the proven ways to subtly dismantle a woman's ego, keeping you in the driver's seat of the relationship. Before we dive into these strategies, make sure to watch this video till the end, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and comment below with your thoughts or any stories you might have. Sharing your experience can help others on their journey as well. Chapter 1. Never validate her looks. The first step in maintaining control in any relationship is to never validate her looks. In our society, women often derive a significant portion of their self-esteem from the compliments they receive, particularly about their appearance. Compliments are like fuel for the ego, reinforcing a woman's sense of attractiveness and desirability. When you withhold the validation, you create an air of mystery and uncertainty that disrupts this dynamic. She'll begin to question her own worth, wondering why she isn't receiving the praise she's accustomed to. This subtle form of control can lower her ego without her even realizing it, shifting the balance of power in the relationship to your favor. To execute this effectively, you need to adopt a demeanor that shows you're unimpressed by superficial beauty. It's not about being rude or disrespectful, rather, it's about maintaining an air of indifference. When she asks for your opinion on her appearance, respond with neutrality or a slight indifference. For example, if she dresses up and asks how she looks, a simple it's okay or you look fine will suffice. The goal is to avoid feeding her ego with compliments that she can easily get from others. By doing so, you make it clear that her looks are not the primary factor that influences your interest in her. This tactic works because it plays on her insecurities. Most women are accustomed to being complimented, especially in today's social media-driven world, where validation can come from countless sources. When they don't get that validation from you, it creates a psychological void, one that she'll feel compelled to fill. She'll begin to seek your approval more intensely, becoming more invested in your opinion. This heightened need for your validation gives you a subtle but powerful form of control. The Stoics believed in not giving in to flattery, as it clouds judgment and distorts reality. By not validating her looks, you maintain clarity and control in the relationship, ensuring that it's based on more substantial grounds. However, it's essential to balance this approach carefully. If you're too cold or dismissive, it could backfire and push her away entirely. The key is to be subtle and consistent, allowing her to remain intrigued by your unpredictability. You want to strike a balance between being indifferent and being cruel. The goal is to make her uncertain, not to make her feel unattractive or unloved. Over time, this strategy will lower her ego and shift the power dynamic in your favor, allowing you to control the narrative of the relationship. It's also important to recognize that this approach requires emotional intelligence and self-control. You need to be able to read her reactions and adjust your behavior accordingly. If she starts to pull away or becomes overly insecure, you may need to slightly soften your approach. The Stoics were masters of balance and moderation, understanding that too much of anything can lead to ruin. By applying this principle, you can use the tactic of withholding validation without jeopardizing the relationship. Moreover, this strategy should not be your only approach to managing the relationship. While never validating her looks can be effective in keeping her ego in check, it's just one piece of a larger puzzle. You need to ensure that your relationship is built on respect, mutual interests, and emotional connection. By combining these elements, you create a dynamic where she feels challenged, but also valued in ways that go beyond superficial compliments. In the end, the goal is not to make her feel bad about herself, but to shift the focus of the relationship from superficial validation to deeper, more meaningful interactions. By not validating her looks, you encourage her to engage with you on a more profound level where the true substance of your connection lies. This approach allows you to maintain control while also fostering a relationship that's based on mutual respect and genuine interest. 
The Stoics would approve of this method as it reflects their teachings on self-control, clarity, and the importance of focusing on what truly matters in life and relationships. Chapter 2. Never Ask for Commitment A critical aspect of maintaining control in a relationship is to never ask for commitment. Commitment is something that many women desire because it provides them with a sense of security and stability. When you don't ask for it, you create an environment where she feels uncertain and continually strives to earn your commitment. This uncertainty can be a powerful tool in keeping her ego in check, as she'll constantly be wondering about where she stands with you. When you avoid discussing commitment, you convey that you are in control of the relationship's direction and pace. You're not desperate for her to lock things down or define the relationship, which makes you appear more self-assured and less needy. This approach forces her to work harder to gain your full attention and devotion, effectively lowering her ego as she chases after something she's not sure she can have. By never asking for commitment, you also keep your options open. This gives you the freedom to explore other opportunities without feeling tied down. It places you in a position of power, where she's the one wondering about exclusivity and long-term potential, not you. This role reversal can be jarring for many women who are used to being the ones who are pursued for commitment. The Stoics believed in the importance of controlling one's desires and not being swayed by the fleeting emotions of the moment. By not asking for commitment, you're exercising that same level of self-control and ensuring that you remain the master of your own emotions. However, this approach requires finesse. You don't want to come across as disinterested or as someone who's just using her. The key is to be present and engaged in the relationship without explicitly asking for commitment. This subtlety will keep her intrigued and invested as she tries to figure out what your true intentions are. Over time, this will create a dynamic where she's more focused on earning your commitment than on maintaining her own sense of ego and self-worth. Another benefit of not asking for commitment is that it allows the relationship to develop naturally without the pressure of labels or expectations. This can lead to a more genuine connection where both parties are free to enjoy each other's company without the stress of trying to meet certain milestones. It also gives you the space to assess whether the relationship is truly right for you without the influence of external pressures. In the end, by never asking for commitment, you keep the power dynamic in your favor, maintaining control over the relationship's direction and ensuring that she remains invested in you. This approach aligns with the stoic philosophy of self-control and rational decision-making, allowing you to navigate the complexities of relationships with clarity and confidence. Chapter 3. Never Chase for Validation Chasing validation is one of the most detrimental behaviors in any relationship, as it undermines your power and places you in a position of vulnerability. When you actively seek validation from a woman, you are, in essence, handing over the reins of your self-worth to her, allowing her to dictate how you see yourself. This imbalance not only inflates her ego, but also erodes the foundation of a healthy, balanced relationship. To maintain control and ensure that her ego remains in check, it is imperative that you never chase validation. Instead, you must cultivate a strong, independent sense of self-worth that stands firm, irrespective of her opinions or approval. Validation is a powerful tool, often wielded unconsciously. Many women are accustomed to receiving constant attention, compliments, and efforts from men trying to win their favor. This dynamic places them in a position of power, where they become the gatekeepers of approval and affection. When you refuse to chase after this validation, you disrupt the usual pattern and present yourself as a man who is not easily swayed by external opinions. This deviation from the norm can be both intriguing and challenging for a woman, as it forces her to re-evaluate her approach to you and the relationship. By abstaining from the pursuit of validation, you send a clear message that your self-esteem is not dependent on her approval. This stance is both empowering and liberating, as it frees you from the emotional roller coaster of seeking constant reassurance. 
Moreover, it subtly shifts the power dynamic in your favor. When a woman realizes that you are not like other men who constantly seek her validation, she becomes more interested in understanding why you stand out. This curiosity can lead her to seek your validation instead, effectively reversing the roles and placing you in a position of control. The Stoic philosophy teaches the importance of self-reliance and emotional independence. Stoics believe that true strength comes from within and that one should not allow external factors to dictate their sense of self. By embracing this principle and refusing to chase validation, you align yourself with these teachings, demonstrating emotional resilience and self-mastery. This inner strength not only keeps her ego in check, but also enhances your own sense of confidence and self-worth, making you a more attractive and desirable partner. Furthermore, when you refrain from seeking validation, you create an aura of mystery and unpredictability. Women are often accustomed to men who wear their hearts on their sleeves, making their feelings and intentions abundantly clear. When you do not conform to this pattern, you introduce an element of uncertainty into the relationship. This uncertainty can be captivating, as it compels her to invest more effort into understanding your thoughts and feelings. The intrigue you generate by not chasing validation keeps her engaged and interested as she tries to unravel the enigma that you present. This approach also fosters emotional independence, a quality that is highly valued in any relationship. When you are not constantly seeking validation, you become less susceptible to the fluctuations of her moods, opinions, or actions. This detachment does not mean that you are indifferent or uncaring, rather, it shows that you have cultivated a level of emotional resilience that allows you to remain stable and composed, regardless of external circumstances. The Stoics would commend this psychological strength as it aligns with their teachings on maintaining inner peace and self-control. However, it is important to strike a balance in this approach. While you should never chase validation, you must also ensure that you do not come across as completely indifferent or emotionally distant. The goal is to maintain a confident and self-assured demeanor while remaining genuinely engaged in the relationship. This balance is key to fostering a healthy, dynamic connection where both partners feel valued and respected. By mastering this balance, you keep her ego in check, maintain control, and create an environment where mutual respect and admiration can flourish. In the long run, your refusal to chase validation will be one of the most attractive qualities you can possess. It signals to her that you are a man who knows his worth and does not rely on others to define it. This confidence and independence are incredibly appealing as they set you apart from the majority of men who are constantly seeking approval. As she recognizes these qualities in you, her respect and admiration for you will grow, further solidifying your position as a strong, capable, and desirable partner. The decision to never chase validation is not just about maintaining control in the relationship, it is also about nurturing your own sense of self-worth and ensuring that you remain true to your values. The Stoics believe that the key to a fulfilling life lies in living according to one's principles and not allowing external factors to dictate one's sense of self. By adhering to this philosophy in your relationships, you not only keep her ego in check, but also cultivate a life of purpose, meaning, and self-respect. In summary, the act of never chasing validation is a powerful strategy for maintaining control and keeping her ego in check. It allows you to remain grounded in your own self-worth, independent of her opinions, and creates a dynamic where she is more likely to seek your approval. This approach aligns with stoic principles of self-reliance and emotional resilience, ensuring that you build a relationship based on mutual respect and admiration rather than dependency and insecurity. By embodying this mindset, you position yourself as a high-value man who is confident, self-assured, and in control of his own destiny. Chapter 4. Never get jealous of other men around her. Jealousy is a powerful emotion, often rooted in fear and insecurity. In relationships, it's easy to fall into the trap of letting jealousy dictate your actions, but doing so can undermine your position and weaken your influence. 
When you display jealousy, you inadvertently elevate the status of other men around her, making them appear more desirable or important. To maintain control and keep her ego in check, it's essential that you resist the urge to show jealousy, no matter the circumstances. When you refrain from displaying jealousy, you project an aura of self-assurance and confidence. This not only signals that you are secure in your relationship, but also that you trust in your own worth. Confidence is an incredibly attractive quality, and when a woman sees that you're not threatened by the presence of other men, it can profoundly shift the power dynamics in your favor. She will start to recognize that you're not easily swayed by external factors, which can lower her ego and refocus her attention on you. By never getting jealous, you also send a clear message that you're not afraid of losing her. This nonchalant attitude can be incredibly disarming because many women are accustomed to men who become possessive or anxious when other men are around. Your lack of jealousy indicates that you have control over your emotions and that you value yourself too much to be rattled by perceived competition. This inner strength, as taught by the Stoics, is a cornerstone of true power. By demonstrating that you possess this strength, you show that you are not a man easily swayed by the superficial attentions of others. Moreover, not showing jealousy positions you as a high-value man in her eyes. High-value men do not concern themselves with competition because they are secure in their own worth. This mindset places you above petty emotions and reinforces your position as someone who is confident and self-assured. As she comes to understand this, it can lower her ego, making her realize that she's with a man who isn't easily manipulated or influenced by the actions of others. However, mastering this approach requires a significant degree of self-control and emotional intelligence. Jealousy is a natural emotion, and it's only human to feel a pang of it when other men are around. The key is to manage these feelings internally, ensuring they don't manifest in your behavior. Remaining calm and composed, even in situations where jealousy might be expected, will not only keep her ego in check, but also reinforce your role as the dominant figure in the relationship. Over time, your ability to remain unaffected by jealousy will become one of your most attractive traits. It reflects maturity, confidence, and a deep sense of self-worth, all of which are vital for maintaining control in any relationship. The Stoics believed in the power of self-mastery, and by not giving in to jealousy, you're practicing that same level of discipline and control in your own life. This approach will not only lower her ego, but also solidify your position as the man she respects and admires. Chapter 5. Put your goals above her. One of the most effective ways to maintain control in a relationship and keep her ego in check is to put your goals above her. It's crucial to have a clear sense of purpose and direction in life, and when you prioritize your goals, you demonstrate that your life is driven by something greater than just the relationship. This mindset not only lowers her ego, but also establishes you as a man of substance and ambition, traits that are universally respected and admired. Women are often drawn to men who are focused, driven, and passionate about their goals. When you make it evident that your goals come first, you create a dynamic where she understands that she needs to fit into your life rather than you bending to accommodate her. This can be a powerful ego check as it forces her to realize that she's not the center of your universe. Instead, she's part of it and she'll need to respect your time, energy, and priorities if she wants to be with you. Prioritizing your goals also helps prevent you from becoming too dependent on the relationship for your happiness or sense of self-worth. When your identity is tied to your goals and ambitions, you're less likely to be influenced by the highs and lows of the relationship. This emotional independence is attractive because it shows that you're a man with a mission, not someone who can be easily swayed or manipulated. She'll see you as strong, self-sufficient, and focused, qualities that keep the power dynamic in your favor. The Stoics taught that true fulfillment comes from living a life of purpose and meaning. By putting your goals above her, you embody this philosophy, ensuring that your life is guided by principles larger than any one relationship. 
This not only keeps her ego in check, but also keeps you grounded and focused on what truly matters in life. Your goals are your compass, and by staying true to them, you demonstrate a level of discipline and self-respect that is rare and highly valued. However, it's important to communicate your priorities in a way that doesn't come across as dismissive or uncaring. The goal is to make it clear that while you value the relationship, your goals are your primary focus. This can be achieved by setting boundaries, being transparent about your schedule, and not compromising on your ambitions for the sake of the relationship. Over time, she'll learn to respect your priorities, and this will create a dynamic where she's more invested in supporting your goals rather than competing with them. By putting your goals above her, you maintain control in the relationship, keep her ego in check, and ensure that your life remains on a path of purpose and fulfillment. This approach aligns with the stoic principles of self-discipline and living according to your values. It allows you to build a relationship that complements your life rather than defines it. The more you invest in your goals, the more she'll see you as a man of vision and strength, someone worth respecting and admiring. Chapter 6. Never be too available. Availability is often mistaken for attentiveness, but in reality, being too available can quickly diminish your value in a relationship. When you're constantly at her beck and call, you send a message that you have nothing more important in your life than catering to her needs. This not only inflates her ego, but also sets a dangerous precedent where she expects you to prioritize her above everything else. To maintain control and keep her ego in check, it's crucial that you never be too available. When you're too available, you lose the air of mystery that initially attracted her to you. Relationships thrive on a certain level of unpredictability and excitement, and by always being there, you remove these essential elements. She'll begin to take your presence for granted, and over time, this can lead to a lack of respect and appreciation for what you bring to the table. Instead, by limiting your availability, you create a dynamic where she has to work to earn your time and attention. This doesn't mean playing games or intentionally ignoring her, but rather ensuring that your life is filled with other meaningful activities, responsibilities, and goals. By focusing on your passions, hobbies, and career, you naturally become less available, and this scarcity makes your presence more valuable. When she sees that you're not always available at a moment's notice, she'll begin to appreciate the time you do spend together more deeply. This, in turn, can lower her ego as she realizes that she's not the center of your universe. Additionally, by not being too available, you communicate that you have a fulfilling life outside of the relationship. This is incredibly attractive because it shows that you're not dependent on her for your happiness or sense of self-worth. It also signals that you're a man of value, someone whose time is precious and not to be wasted. The more she sees that you have a life filled with purpose and passion, the more she'll want to be a part of it, and this can significantly shift the power dynamic in your favor. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-reliance and independence, and by not being too available, you embody these principles in your relationship. You show that you're not just a follower, but a leader in your own life, someone who makes decisions based on their own needs and desires, rather than constantly bending to the will of others. This level of self-respect is crucial for maintaining control in any relationship and keeping her ego in check. However, it's important to strike a balance. Being too unavailable can make you seem distant or uninterested, which could push her away. The key is to find a middle ground where you're engaged and present, but not at the expense of your own needs and goals. By doing so, you create a dynamic where she values your time and attention, recognizing that they are not given freely, but earned. This will keep her ego in check and ensure that the relationship remains balanced and healthy. Over time, by maintaining a sense of independence and not being too available, you'll find that your value in her eyes increases. She'll see you as a man who is confident, self-sufficient, and in control of his life, qualities that are incredibly attractive and that will keep her ego in check. By embracing this approach, 
you not only maintain control in the relationship, but also stay true to the stoic principles of self-reliance and independence. When you're constantly available, you inadvertently make yourself less desirable. The psychological principle of scarcity suggests that people value what is rare or hard to attain. By always being available, you lose that element of scarcity, making her take your presence and attention for granted. To counter this, you need to create a sense of unpredictability in your availability. When she doesn't know when she can have your attention, she'll value it more when she does get it. The key to mastering this tactic is to be strategic with your time. Don't always answer her calls or messages immediately. Instead, let some time pass before responding. This doesn't mean you should play games or act disinterested, but rather, you should have other priorities that sometimes take precedence over her. When she sees that your time is valuable and not always at her disposal, it will lower her ego and make her work harder to earn your attention. This approach aligns with the Stoic principle of valuing your own time and energy. The Stoics believe that one should focus on what is within their control and not be swayed by external demands. By not being too available, you demonstrate that your life is filled with purpose and that you're in control of how you spend your time. This self-discipline is attractive and can significantly shift the power dynamics in the relationship. However, it's important to balance this with genuine care and attention. The goal is not to ignore her or make her feel unimportant, but to ensure that your availability is not taken for granted. When you do give her your time and attention, it should feel special and meaningful, reinforcing the idea that your presence is something to be valued, not expected. This will keep her ego in check and maintain a healthy level of respect in the relationship. In the long run, by never being too available, you create a dynamic where she appreciates your time and attention more deeply. It keeps the relationship balanced and ensures that you're not overextending yourself or sacrificing your own needs for the sake of her ego. This approach is rooted in the stoic philosophy of living with intention and not allowing external pressures to dictate your actions. By practicing this, you maintain control, keep her ego in check, and build a relationship based on mutual respect and value. Chapter 7. Look at other women. One of the most effective ways to keep a woman's ego in check is by subtly reminding her that she's not the only attractive woman in your life. This doesn't mean being overtly disrespectful, but rather demonstrating that you're aware of other women and are not completely captivated by her. Looking at other women, when done with finesse, can create a sense of competition and uncertainty, which can significantly lower her ego. Women are often used to being the center of attention, especially when they're in a relationship. When you look at other women, you break that expectation and introduce a level of unpredictability. She begins to realize that your attention isn't guaranteed and that she needs to continue to earn it. This can be a powerful motivator for her to invest more in the relationship as she'll want to regain her position as the primary focus of your attention. The key to this tactic is subtlety. You don't want to be disrespectful or make her feel insecure in a harmful way. Instead, the goal is to gently remind her that she's part of a larger world and your interest in her isn't something she can take for granted. For instance, if you're out together and you notice an attractive woman, a brief glance is enough to make your point. This isn't about ogling or making her feel uncomfortable, it's about maintaining a sense of realism in the relationship. By acknowledging the attractiveness of other women, you also reinforce the idea that you have options. This can be a powerful ego check, as she'll recognize that you're not entirely dependent on her for your sense of fulfillment. The Stoics taught that one should not be overly attached to any single external source of happiness. By showing that your attention can be drawn to others, you're practicing this principle of detachment, which can help keep her ego in check. Another benefit of this approach is that it can lead to a healthier dynamic in the relationship, when she realizes that you have a wider perspective, she's likely to put in more effort to keep your attention and respect. This doesn't mean you should be unfaithful or disrespectful, 
but rather that you maintain a healthy awareness of the world around you. This awareness can keep her ego in check and ensure that the relationship remains balanced and dynamic. However, it's important to be mindful of how you execute this tactic. If done poorly, it can come across as insensitive or hurtful. The goal is to be subtle and to use this approach as a way to keep things interesting, not to cause harm. When done correctly, looking at other women can be a powerful tool in maintaining control in the relationship and keeping her ego in check. In conclusion, by looking at other women, you maintain a sense of balance and realism in the relationship. This tactic, rooted in the stoic principles of detachment and self-awareness, helps to keep her ego in check and ensures that the relationship remains dynamic and engaging. It's a subtle but effective way to remind her that your attention is valuable and not to be taken for granted. Chapter 8. The Power of Silence Silence is a tool often underestimated in its ability to influence relationships. In a world where people are quick to fill every moment with words, embracing silence can set you apart and give you an edge in maintaining control. The power of silence lies in its ability to create space for introspection, mystery, and intrigue. When used strategically, silence can be a potent means of communication, signaling confidence, self-assuredness, and emotional depth. Silence is not merely the absence of speech, it's a deliberate choice to hold back, to refrain from unnecessary words, and to allow the other person to fill the void. This creates a dynamic where your words carry more weight when you do speak, making her more attentive and responsive. In relationships, especially with women who are accustomed to constant chatter and validation-seeking behavior from men, your silence can be a refreshing and intriguing change. It challenges her to engage with you on a deeper level, as she works to decipher what your silence means. Moreover, silence can be a powerful way to maintain your emotional independence. By not reacting immediately or filling every moment with conversation, you give yourself the opportunity to process your emotions and thoughts. This pause allows you to respond thoughtfully rather than react impulsively, demonstrating control and maturity. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-control and measured responses, and by practicing silence, you align with these teachings. You show that you are not easily swayed by external pressures, maintaining a steady and composed demeanor. Silence also plays a significant role in creating a sense of mystery. When you don't reveal everything through words, you leave her wondering about your thoughts, feelings, and intentions. This uncertainty can be captivating, as it keeps her invested in the relationship, trying to uncover the layers of your personality. The less you reveal, the more she will be drawn to you, intrigued by the enigma you present. This controlled ambiguity can be a powerful tool in maintaining her interest and keeping the relationship dynamic. Furthermore, silence can be a form of silent protest or boundary setting. When something bothers you or when you feel disrespected, choosing silence over confrontation can send a strong message. It shows that you are not willing to engage in unnecessary conflict, but at the same time, you are not passively accepting the situation. This form of non-verbal communication can be more impactful than words, as it forces the other person to reflect on their behavior and reconsider their actions. However, it's important to balance silence with communication. Silence should not be used as a weapon or a means to create distance. Instead, it should be a tool to enhance communication by creating space for meaningful dialogue. When you do speak, your words should be thoughtful, deliberate, and impactful. This balance ensures that silence serves its purpose in maintaining control and intrigue while also fostering a healthy, open line of communication. The power of silence lies in its ability to shift the focus from external validation to internal reflection. It encourages you to be mindful of your words, to think before you speak, and to ensure that your communication is purposeful. By mastering the art of silence, you maintain control, create intrigue, and demonstrate a level of emotional maturity that is both attractive and empowering. 
In summary, silence is a powerful tool in relationships, offering a way to maintain control, create intrigue, and demonstrate emotional independence. By choosing silence strategically, you shift the dynamic in your favor, encouraging deeper engagement and reflection. The Stoics valued silence as a means of self-control and inner peace, and by embracing this principle, you position yourself as a man of depth, confidence, and resilience. Through silence, you can communicate more effectively, maintain a sense of mystery, and keep her invested in the relationship, all while fostering a deeper connection built on respect and understanding. Chapter 9. Never go down on her. One of the most effective ways to maintain control and manage a woman's ego is to never engage in certain acts that might diminish your position in the relationship. Among these is the act of going down on her, which can inadvertently shift the power dynamics and inflate her ego. By refraining from this particular act, you assert your dominance and establish a clear boundary in the relationship. When you choose not to engage in this act, you send a message that you prioritize your own desires and boundaries. This approach is not about denying intimacy, but rather about maintaining a balanced dynamic where both partners respect each other's limits. By setting this boundary, you communicate that you are not willing to compromise your own standards or position for the sake of pleasing her. This stance can be both assertive and empowering, as it reinforces your control and prevents her ego from becoming inflated. The decision to avoid going down on her also has psychological implications. In many relationships, the act of performing oral sex can be perceived as a submissive gesture where one partner's pleasure is prioritized over the others. By not participating in this act, you challenge the typical dynamics and position yourself as someone who values mutual respect and equality. This approach can disrupt her expectations and prompt her to re-evaluate her approach to the relationship, ultimately leading to a more balanced power dynamic. Stoic philosophy teaches the importance of self-discipline and maintaining one's principles. The Stoics believe that true strength comes from adhering to one's values and not being swayed by external pressures or desires. By refusing to engage in acts that compromise your boundaries, you align with these principles and demonstrate that you are guided by a clear sense of self-worth and respect. This approach not only keeps her ego in check, but also reinforces your position as someone who is steadfast and principled. Furthermore, avoiding certain acts can help maintain a sense of mystery and intrigue in the relationship. When you set clear boundaries and do not engage in specific behaviors, you create an aura of unpredictability. This unpredictability can be captivating, as it challenges her to engage with you on a deeper level and respect your boundaries. The element of mystery can also enhance the attraction and keep the relationship dynamic, as she is more likely to be intrigued by your self-assured demeanor and willingness to uphold your standards. It is important to communicate your boundaries with respect and clarity. While you should maintain your position, it is essential to ensure that your approach does not come across as dismissive or disrespectful. The goal is to establish a healthy dynamic where both partners feel valued and respected, while also maintaining a clear sense of control and authority. By navigating this balance, you create a relationship where mutual respect and understanding are prioritized, and where your position remains strong and influential. In conclusion, never going down on her is a strategic approach for maintaining control and managing her ego within the relationship. By setting clear boundaries and upholding your own standards, you assert your dominance and create a balanced dynamic. This approach aligns with stoic principles of self-discipline and respect, ensuring that you maintain your position of authority while fostering a relationship built on mutual admiration and understanding. As we've explored in this episode, the Stoics mastered the art of understanding human nature, including the psychology of women. By applying these principles, never validating her looks, never asking for commitment, never being too available, and looking at other women, you can maintain control in your relationships and keep her ego in check. Remember, these strategies are not about manipulation, but about establishing a balanced dynamic where mutual respect and understanding prevail. 
the key takeaway is that by staying true to your values and maintaining your own sense of worth, you ensure that the relationship is built on a foundation of respect rather than one-sided validation. The Stoics believed in self-control, discipline, and the importance of not being swayed by external factors. By integrating these lessons into your interactions, you create a dynamic where you remain in control, and she learns to appreciate and respect you more deeply. But this is just the beginning. The real power lies in consistency and the subtlety with which you apply these tactics. Keep practicing, and you'll find that you naturally command respect and admiration without needing to seek it out. If you found this episode insightful, make sure to watch it till the end, like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Have you tried any of these methods? What's your experience been like? We'd love to hear your stories and any additional insights you might have. Remember, every relationship is unique, but by understanding these psychological principles, you're better equipped to navigate them successfully. See you in the next episode. Throughout history, Stoics have been revered for their mastery of human emotions and psychology. They understood that true power lies not in controlling others, but in mastering oneself. This deep understanding extended to their relationships with women, where they applied principles that made them irresistible and left women longing for their attention. In today's episode, we'll delve into the psychological tactics that only 1% of men know, tactics that make women obsess over them. If you're ready to unlock the secrets of female psychology and elevate your game, stay tuned. Don't forget to watch until the end, like, subscribe, comment, and share your own stories. Let's dive in. Chapter 1. Show her you're still living your life. One of the most compelling ways to make a woman obsess over you is to demonstrate that you're still living your life to the fullest, regardless of her presence. Women are naturally drawn to men who exhibit a strong sense of purpose, independence, and self-assurance. When you maintain your focus on your passions, nurture your social life, and stay committed to your personal goals, you send a powerful message, you are a man whose life is full and rich, and it doesn't solely revolve around her. This approach creates a sense of intrigue, mystery, and respect. Women don't want to be the entirety of a man's world, they want to be a part of it. By continuing to pursue your interests and passions, you establish yourself as someone who values his own life and ambitions. This not only enhances your desirability, but also piques her curiosity. She'll begin to wonder what occupies your time when she's not around, leading her to think about you more frequently and intensely. In relationships, it's all too easy to lose yourself and become overly focused on your partner. However, maintaining your individuality is crucial not only for your own well-being, but also for the health of the relationship. The Stoics, who mastered the art of self-control and personal growth, believed in living in accordance with one's true nature. They emphasized the importance of staying true to oneself, irrespective of external influences. By adhering to your own path and not sacrificing your goals for the sake of the relationship, you embody this principle. This steadfastness naturally draws women toward you, as they are innately attracted to men who are secure in their identity and purpose. When a woman sees that you are still living your life fully, she recognizes that you are not dependent on her for your happiness. This realization can be incredibly attractive, as it signals that you are a high-value man who doesn't require constant validation or reassurance. It also shifts the dynamic in your favor, placing you in a position of strength. She will begin to crave your attention and validation, knowing that it is not something you dispense lightly or out of desperation. Furthermore, by continuing to live your life with passion and purpose, you subtly communicate that you have options, that you are not bound to any one person or relationship. This nonchalance can be disarming and deeply intriguing to a woman. It challenges her to step up and prove herself worthy of your time and attention as she realizes that you are a man who has many other fulfilling aspects of life. The key here is to strike a balance. While it's important to remain attentive and caring, 
it should never come at the cost of your own life and goals. By consistently showing that your life is full and fulfilling, you create a powerful psychological effect, she becomes more invested in wanting to be part of it. Women are drawn to men who have a strong sense of self, and by demonstrating that your life is complete with or without her, you increase your value in her eyes. Living your life fully doesn't mean ignoring her or being distant, it's about maintaining your own identity and not losing sight of what makes you, you. It's about continuing to pursue your hobbies, spending time with your friends, advancing in your career, and nurturing your personal growth. When you do this, you not only enhance your own happiness and fulfillment, but also create a magnetic aura that draws women toward you. Moreover, when a woman sees that you are still living your life, she understands that you are not someone who can be easily manipulated or controlled. This realization can lower her ego and make her more eager to win your affection and approval. She'll see you as a challenge, someone who is not easily swayed or influenced by her charms. This dynamic creates a sense of excitement and intrigue as she realizes that being with you requires effort on her part. In the end, showing her that you're still living your life is about demonstrating that you are a man of substance, a man who has a clear sense of purpose and direction. It's about proving that you are not willing to sacrifice your own happiness and fulfillment for the sake of a relationship. This mindset not only makes you more attractive, but also ensures that the relationship, if it happens, is built on mutual respect and admiration. By continuing to live your life fully, you position yourself as a high-value man who is confident, self-assured, and not easily swayed by external factors. This approach will make her obsess over you, as she realizes that you are a man who is not only worth her time, but also someone she must work to win over. The more you live your life on your terms, the more she will want to be part of it, making her increasingly invested in you and the relationship. Chapter 2. Don't give in to the attention bait. In any relationship, the balance of power often hinges on who craves validation more. One of the most effective ways to keep a woman intrigued and even obsessed with you is to resist the temptation to give in to the attention bait she might throw your way. Women, consciously or not, often test men by seeking validation through various means, whether it's fishing for compliments, posting alluring photos, or seeking reassurance about how you feel. The moment you start chasing this bait, you tip the balance of power in her favor, which can diminish your appeal. The concept of attention bait is rooted in psychology. People, in general, desire affirmation and validation from those they care about, but women are often more adept at using subtle cues to draw this out from men. When you fall into the trap of constantly reassuring her or chasing after her approval, you inadvertently position yourself as the one seeking her validation. This behavior can make you appear needy or insecure, which is a significant turn-off. Instead, the key is to remain composed and maintain a sense of mystery. When you don't immediately respond to her attempts to get attention, you create an aura of intrigue. She'll start to wonder why you're not reacting the way she expects, which in turn makes her think about you more. This thought process can quickly lead to her obsessing over you as she tries to figure out why you're not easily swayed by her charms. The Stoics were masters of emotional control, teaching that true strength comes from within and is not dependent on external validation. By embodying this principle, you can maintain your composure and not give in to the attention bait. When you refrain from constantly validating her, you communicate that your sense of self-worth is not dependent on her approval, which can be incredibly attractive. This approach also gives you the upper hand in the relationship when you don't react predictably to her attempts at garnering attention, you shift the dynamic in your favor. She'll begin to see you as someone who is confident, self-assured, and not easily influenced. This unpredictability can make you more desirable because it challenges her to step up and work harder to earn your attention. However, it's important to strike a balance. You don't want to come across as completely indifferent or cold as this can push her away. The goal is to maintain a steady, 
calm demeanor that shows you're in control of your emotions and that you're not easily swayed by her attempts to gain attention. By doing so, you not only keep her intrigued, but also demonstrate that you're a man of substance who values his own emotional well-being. In practice, this might mean not immediately responding to her texts, not always complimenting her when she seeks it, or simply being less available at times. These small actions can have a significant impact on how she perceives you. Over time, she'll start to respect and admire your ability to stay grounded and not be easily manipulated by her attention-seeking behavior. Moreover, by not giving in to the attention bait, you create a sense of scarcity. When your validation is not easily obtained, it becomes more valuable in her eyes. She'll start to crave your attention and work harder to get it, which can lead to her becoming more invested in you. This dynamic can make her obsess over you as she constantly thinks about how to win your approval and keep you interested. Ultimately, the key to not giving in to the attention bait is to remain calm, composed, and self-assured. By doing so, you show that you are a man who is not easily swayed by external influences and that your sense of self-worth is firmly rooted within. This approach not only keeps her intrigued, but also establishes you as a high-value man who is worth pursuing. Chapter 3. Don't be eager, be vague. In the early stages of any relationship, it's natural to want to impress and connect with the other person. However, one of the most powerful ways to make a woman obsess over you is to avoid being overly eager. Eagerness can come across as desperation, which can be a major turn-off. Instead, embrace the power of being vague, keeping a little mystery and unpredictability in your interactions. When you're vague about your intentions, plans, or feelings, you create an aura of intrigue that can be incredibly attractive. Women are naturally curious, and when you don't lay all your cards on the table, she'll start to wonder what you're thinking, what you're doing, and where she stands with you. This uncertainty can make her think about you more often as she tries to figure out the puzzle you present. Being vague doesn't mean being aloof or disinterested, it's about maintaining a level of unpredictability. The Stoics believed in the power of self-control and not being overly attached to external outcomes. By embodying this principle, you can resist the urge to be overly forthcoming and instead focus on maintaining your composure and keeping some things to yourself. For example, if she asks about your plans, instead of giving her a detailed rundown, you might say something like, I have a few things going on this weekend, without elaborating. Or if she seeks reassurance about your feelings, you can be honest without being overly expressive, I enjoy spending time with you, let's see where this goes. These responses keep the conversation open-ended and leave her wanting to know more. This approach also allows you to maintain control over the pace of the relationship. When you're not overly eager or forthcoming, you create a dynamic where she has to work to get closer to you. She'll start to invest more time and energy into the relationship, trying to figure out where she stands and what you're all about. This investment on her part can lead to her becoming more emotionally involved and even obsessed with you. However, it's important to balance being vague with showing genuine interest. You don't want to come across as completely uninterested or emotionally unavailable, as this can push her away. The key is to show enough interest to keep her engaged while still maintaining an air of mystery. This balance keeps her intrigued and keeps you in control of the dynamic. Being vague also allows you to protect your emotional well-being. By not revealing everything about yourself right away, you maintain a sense of privacy and control over your emotions. This can be empowering, as it ensures that you're not giving too much of yourself too soon and that you're maintaining a healthy boundary in the relationship. Moreover, when you're vague, you create opportunities for her to open up more. She may start to share more about herself in an effort to get you to do the same. This can lead to a deeper connection, as she becomes more invested in the relationship. The more she invests, the more likely she is to think about you, wonder about you, and ultimately become obsessed with you. 
In summary, being vague is a powerful tool in creating intrigue and maintaining control in a relationship. By not being overly eager and keeping a little mystery in your interactions, you make her work to get closer to you. This dynamic not only keeps her interested, but also ensures that you remain in a position of strength, guiding the pace and direction of the relationship. Chapter 4. Don't contact her too often. One of the most common mistakes men make in relationships is overcommunication. While it's natural to want to stay in touch with someone you're interested in, contacting a woman too often can have the opposite effect of what you intend. Instead of making her feel closer to you, it can make her feel overwhelmed or even suffocated. To make a woman obsess over you, it's crucial to strike the right balance by not contacting her too frequently. The idea of not contacting her too often ties back to the concept of scarcity. People tend to value things that are rare or hard to obtain. When you're constantly available and always reaching out, you diminish the sense of scarcity, making your presence feel less special. On the other hand, when you space out your communications, it creates a sense of anticipation and longing. She'll start to wonder why you're not reaching out, what you're doing, and when she'll hear from you next. This curiosity can quickly turn into obsession as she thinks about you more and more. The Stoics emphasized the importance of self-discipline and not being swayed by emotions. By practicing restraint in how often you contact her, you demonstrate self-control and emotional maturity. This approach shows that you're not desperate for her attention and that you have a full, busy life outside of the relationship. It also sends the message that you're confident enough to let the relationship develop naturally without the need for constant reassurance. When you do reach out, make sure your communications are meaningful and engaging. Quality over quantity is key here. A well-thought-out message or a brief but interesting conversation will have a much greater impact than constant, mundane texts. By being selective in your communications, you make each interaction more significant and memorable. This strategy also gives her time to miss you. When you're not always in contact, she has the opportunity to reflect on your interactions, to think about you, and to wonder what you're up to. This absence can create a stronger emotional bond as she starts to associate the feelings of longing and anticipation with you. However, it's important to be mindful of how this approach is perceived. While you don't want to contact her too often, you also don't want to come across as disinterested or neglectful. The key is to find a balance that keeps her engaged without overwhelming her. This might mean waiting a day or two between texts or calls, or simply being less available during certain times of the day. The goal is to create a rhythm in your communications that keeps her intrigued and invested. Not contacting her too often also gives you the opportunity to maintain your independence and focus on your own life. When you're not constantly preoccupied with reaching out, you have more time to pursue your own interests, goals, and hobbies. This not only makes you a more well-rounded and interesting person, but also adds to your attractiveness. Women are often drawn to men who have their own lives and passions, as it signals confidence and self-sufficiency. In addition, by not contacting her too often, you give her the space to initiate contact herself. When she reaches out to you, it's a sign that she's thinking about you and wants to connect. This role reversal can be empowering for her and can make her feel more invested in the relationship. It also helps to create a dynamic where she's not just passively receiving attention, but is actively seeking it out, which can deepen her emotional attachment to you. Ultimately, the key to making a woman obsess over you is to create a sense of balance in your communications. By not contacting her too often, you create a sense of scarcity and anticipation that keeps her thinking about you. This approach, combined with meaningful interactions when you do communicate, ensures that you remain a significant presence in her life without overwhelming her. Chapter 5. Don't be too available. Availability plays a significant role in the dynamics of attraction. While it's important to show interest in someone you're pursuing, being too available can quickly diminish your value in her eyes. 
If you want to make a woman obsess over you, it's crucial to strike a balance between being present and maintaining a level of scarcity. When you're always available, whether it's to hang out, talk on the phone, or respond to texts, you inadvertently communicate that you have little else going on in your life. This can make you appear less desirable, as women are often drawn to men who have full, busy lives and are selective about how they spend their time. On the other hand, when you're not always available, you create a sense of mystery and intrigue, making her wonder what you're up to and why you're not always at her beck and call. The concept of scarcity is powerful in human psychology. When something is readily available, it's often taken for granted. However, when something is scarce, it becomes more valuable and desirable. By not always being available, you create a sense of scarcity around your presence, which can make her value and desire your time and attention more. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-discipline and not being overly attached to external factors. By practicing restraint in your availability, you demonstrate that you are in control of your time and that you value yourself. This self-respect is attractive and can make her see you as a high-value man who is worth pursuing. One way to manage your availability is by setting boundaries and sticking to them. For example, you might decide that you won't always be available to hang out at the last minute or that you won't respond to texts immediately. These small actions can have a significant impact on how she perceives you. When she realizes that you're not always going to drop everything to be with her, she'll start to see you as someone who has a life of your own, which can make you more attractive in her eyes. It's also important to be mindful of how you spend your time when you're not with her. By pursuing your own interests, hobbies, and goals, you not only become a more well-rounded and interesting person, but you also create a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction in your life. This fulfillment can radiate confidence and contentment, which are highly attractive qualities. However, being less available doesn't mean being aloof or disinterested. The key is to balance your availability in a way that keeps her engaged without making her feel neglected. When you do spend time with her, make sure it's meaningful and enjoyable. This will ensure that she looks forward to your time together and values it even more. Another aspect of not being too available is avoiding the tendency to always say yes to her requests or demands. While it's important to be supportive and accommodating, it's equally important to stand your ground and assert your own needs and boundaries. By doing so, you show that you respect yourself and that you're not willing to compromise your values or priorities just to please her. Moreover, when you're not always available, you create opportunities for her to miss you. Absence, as the saying goes, makes the heart grow fonder. When you're not constantly in her presence, she has time to reflect on your interactions and to anticipate the next time she'll see you. This anticipation can heighten her feelings for you and make her think about you more often, leading to an increased emotional attachment. In conclusion, being too available can diminish your value in a woman's eyes, while maintaining a level of scarcity can make you more desirable. By setting boundaries, pursuing your own interests, and being selective about your availability, you create a dynamic where she values your time and attention more. This approach not only keeps her interested, but also ensures that you maintain control over your own life and happiness. Chapter 6. Make her invest in you. A critical yet often overlooked aspect of making a woman obsess over you is getting her to invest in you. When a woman starts to invest her time, energy, and emotions into you, she naturally becomes more attached and committed. This principle is rooted in psychology, where the more effort someone puts into something, the more they value it. By encouraging her to invest in you, you make her more likely to develop deeper feelings and a stronger attachment. Getting her to invest in you doesn't mean manipulating her into doing things for you. Instead, it's about creating opportunities for her to contribute to the relationship in meaningful ways. This could be as simple as asking for her opinion on something important to you, involving her in your hobbies, or even getting her to help you with a project. When she feels like she's adding value to your life, 
she'll start to see the relationship as something worth nurturing. One way to encourage her to invest in you is by being slightly less available. When you're always at her beck and call, she doesn't have to put in much effort to keep you around. However, when you're a bit more elusive, whether that's by having a busy schedule, pursuing your own interests, or simply not always being the first to initiate contact, she'll have to work a little harder to keep the connection strong. This effort on her part increases her emotional investment in you. Another strategy is to create situations where she feels needed. For example, if you're planning a trip or a big event, ask for her input or help with the arrangements. This gives her a sense of responsibility and involvement, making her more invested in the outcome. It also signals that you value her contributions, which can deepen her emotional connection to you. It's also important to reciprocate her investment. When she does something for you, make sure to acknowledge and appreciate it. This positive reinforcement encourages her to continue investing in the relationship. However, be careful not to overdo it. The goal is to create a balance where both of you are contributing equally, without either party feeling overwhelmed or taken for granted. Additionally, you can encourage her to invest in you emotionally by being open and vulnerable at times. Share your thoughts, dreams, and fears with her, and allow her to do the same. This kind of emotional investment is powerful because it builds trust and intimacy. When she feels like she knows the real you and that you trust her enough to let her in, she's more likely to become emotionally attached. However, it's important to avoid being too needy or reliant on her. The key is to strike a balance where she feels valued and needed but not overwhelmed by the demands of the relationship. By maintaining your independence and continuing to pursue your own goals, you show her that you're a strong, self-sufficient man who values her contributions but doesn't depend on them for his happiness. Another effective way to get her to invest in you is by making her feel like she's part of your future. Talk about your goals and ambitions and involve her in your plans. This could be as simple as discussing future trips, projects, or even more significant life decisions. When she sees herself as part of your future, she's more likely to invest in the relationship and work towards building a life together. Moreover, physical investment is just as important as emotional investment. Encourage her to spend time with you, whether it's through shared activities, date nights, or even simple things like cooking together. The more time she spends with you, the more invested she becomes. This time together strengthens the bond and makes her more likely to see you as someone she wants to be with long term. Finally, remember that making her invest in you is not about playing games or manipulating her emotions. It's about creating a healthy, balanced relationship where both of you contribute equally and feel valued. By encouraging her to invest in you, you build a deeper connection that's based on mutual respect, trust, and emotional engagement. In conclusion, getting a woman to invest in you is a powerful way to make her obsess over you. By creating opportunities for her to contribute to the relationship, both emotionally and physically, you deepen her attachment and make her see the relationship as something worth nurturing. This mutual investment not only strengthens the bond between you but also makes her more committed to making the relationship work. Chapter 7. Stay Mysterious Mystery is one of the most powerful tools in the art of attraction. When you remain mysterious, you create a sense of intrigue and curiosity that keeps a woman thinking about you long after you've left the room. The allure of the unknown is irresistible, and by staying mysterious, you make her obsess over wanting to know more about you. Staying mysterious doesn't mean being secretive or playing hard to get in a manipulative way. Instead, it's about revealing just enough to keep her interested while leaving her wanting more. This creates a dynamic where she's constantly trying to figure you out, which keeps you on her mind and makes her more invested in the relationship. One way to stay mysterious is by not revealing everything about yourself all at once. When you meet someone new, it's natural to want to share your life story, but it's important to hold back a little. 
Share interesting and important details about your life, but save some things for later. This creates a sense of anticipation and gives her something to look forward to as she gets to know you better. Another aspect of staying mysterious is being unpredictable. When you're too predictable, you become less interesting because she knows exactly what to expect from you. By mixing things up, whether it's the way you communicate, the activities you suggest, or the way you express your feelings, you keep her on her toes. This unpredictability can be exciting and make her more eager to spend time with you. Your actions can also play a role in maintaining mystery. For example, if you're always open about your thoughts and feelings, there's nothing left for her to wonder about. But if you occasionally hold back or give a more enigmatic response, it makes her curious about what you're really thinking. This curiosity can drive her to want to spend more time with you in hopes of unraveling the mystery. Mystery can also be cultivated through your lifestyle. If you're constantly trying new things, exploring different interests, or traveling to new places, you naturally become more intriguing. She'll start to see you as someone who is adventurous and full of surprises, which can make her want to be part of your exciting world. However, it's important to balance mystery with authenticity. While it's great to keep her guessing, you don't want to come off as insincere or distant. The key is to be genuine in your interactions while still maintaining an element of unpredictability. This combination of authenticity and mystery is incredibly attractive because it makes you seem both real and complex. Mystery also extends to how you handle communication. For example, instead of always being the first to text or call, sometimes wait for her to reach out to you. This creates a sense of anticipation and makes her wonder what you're up to. When you do communicate, be engaging, but don't reveal everything about your day or your thoughts. Leave a little bit of mystery for her to ponder. Your social media presence can also be a tool for cultivating mystery. Instead of posting everything about your life, share only selective highlights. This not only makes you more intriguing, but also prevents her from feeling like she knows everything about you without having to put in the effort to get to know you personally. Lastly, staying mysterious involves being comfortable with silence. You don't always have to fill every moment with conversation or activity. Sometimes, just being together without saying much can create a powerful sense of connection. This silent communication can be just as impactful as words, as it allows her to feel your presence without needing constant validation. In conclusion, staying mysterious is a powerful way to make a woman obsess over you. By revealing just enough to keep her interested while leaving her wanting more, you create a sense of intrigue and excitement that makes you unforgettable. This mystery not only keeps her thinking about you, but also deepens her emotional investment as she becomes more determined to uncover the layers of your personality. Ultimately, it's this balance of mystery and authenticity that will make her want to be part of your life and keep her coming back for more. As we wrap up this deep dive into the psychology of attraction, it's crucial to remember that the art of making a woman obsess over you is not about manipulation or playing games, it's about understanding and mastering the subtle dynamics that naturally draw people closer together. The principles we've explored today, from living your own life and not giving in to attention bait, to making her invest in you and staying mysterious, are all about building genuine connections based on respect, intrigue, and mutual investment. The Stoics, in their wisdom, understood the importance of self-mastery and living a life of purpose. They believed that true power lies not in controlling others, but in controlling oneself. By embodying these principles, you not only become more attractive to women, but you also become a stronger, more confident version of yourself, someone who is naturally magnetic because he is grounded in his own values and purpose. So, as you apply these strategies, do so with integrity and respect. Remember, the goal is to build lasting connections that are meaningful and fulfilling for both of you. When you focus on being the best version of yourself, you won't just make her obsess over you, you'll also create a relationship that is built on mutual admiration, trust, and genuine attraction. 
If you found value in today's episode, make sure to watch until the end of future videos, as we'll continue exploring topics that can help you navigate the complex world of relationships with confidence and wisdom. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your own stories or insights. Share this video with anyone who might benefit from it, and as always, keep striving to be the best you can be, and not just for others, but for yourself. Until next time, stay strong, stay confident, and continue mastering the art of living. Throughout history, the Stoics, known for their profound understanding of human nature, mastered the art of living with wisdom, self-control, and deep insight into the human psyche. Among the many aspects of life they contemplated, the Stoics recognized the importance of understanding and connecting with others on a deep, intimate level. They knew that true mastery in any area of life, including the realm of physical intimacy, required knowledge, patience, and a thoughtful approach. In today's episode, we will delve into the secrets of female pleasure, exploring nine powerful moves that 99% of men are unaware of. These techniques are not just about physical touch, they tap into the psychological and emotional aspects of pleasure that can make a woman feel completely connected and understood. By mastering these moves, you can take your intimate experiences to new heights, making her scream with pleasure and leaving her deeply satisfied. Before we dive into these powerful techniques, make sure to watch the video until the end. If you find these tips helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your experiences or any questions you may have. And if you've tried any of these moves before, share your story with us. We'd love to hear about your journey to becoming a more attentive and skilled lover. Chapter 1. The Art of Teasing Over the Pants When it comes to building desire, teasing over the pants is an underrated yet incredibly effective technique. This approach isn't just about physical touch, it's about creating an atmosphere of mystery and excitement that can drive her wild before any direct stimulation even begins. The real power of this technique lies in its ability to engage her mind and body simultaneously, setting the stage for an unforgettable experience. Teasing over the pants requires a delicate balance of subtlety and intention. It's not just about where you touch, but how you touch. Start by lightly brushing your fingers over her thighs with feather-like strokes. Gradually move your hand closer to her most sensitive areas, but avoid direct contact at first. The key is to be slow and deliberate, allowing tension to build with each subtle movement. Each touch should hint at the pleasure to come, keeping her on the edge of anticipation. This technique taps into the psychological aspect of arousal, the Stoics understood that true pleasure isn't just about immediate gratification, it's also about the build-up, the anticipation that makes the eventual release even more powerful. By prolonging this teasing touch, you tap into her psychological need for excitement and suspense, creating a connection that heightens her arousal. As you continue teasing her over her pants, pay close attention to her reactions. Is her breathing deepening? Is she arching her back, trying to get closer to you? These are signs that her arousal is building. But don't rush, maintaining high tension will make the eventual release much more intense. Variety is crucial in effective teasing. Don't stick to just one area or type of touch. Alternate between gentle strokes and firmer pressure, moving your hand up and down her thighs, across her lower abdomen, and even lightly grazing over the fabric covering her most sensitive spots. The unpredictability of your movements keeps her guessing, heightening her arousal. The fabric of her clothing adds an extra layer of sensation. By teasing over her pants, you create a barrier that intensifies the suspense. She can feel the heat of your hand and the pressure of your touch, but the fabric adds a layer of separation, making her crave the moment when it's finally removed. This delaying gratification is a powerful tool, allowing her anticipation to build to a peak, making direct contact all the more explosive. Teasing over the pants is about more than just building physical arousal, it's also about deepening the emotional bond between you. 
By taking your time and focusing on her pleasure, you show her that you care about her experience and are willing to invest the effort to make it as enjoyable as possible. This kind of attention can make her feel cherished, which in turn enhances her arousal and makes the experience more meaningful for both of you. In conclusion, mastering the art of teasing over the pants is about creating an experience that engages both her body and mind. By taking your time, paying attention to her responses, and varying your touch, you can make her crave your touch even more, setting the stage for an encounter she won't soon forget. This technique, Grounded in the wisdom of the Stoics shows that true mastery in physical intimacy is about understanding and connecting with your partner on every level. Chapter 2. Mastering the Clitoral Hood Massage The clitoris is often considered the epicenter of female pleasure, and understanding how to stimulate it effectively is crucial for creating intense and satisfying experiences. However, many men overlook the clitoral hood, a sensitive area that can be just as powerful when approached correctly. Mastering the art of massaging the clitoral hood not only adds variety to your techniques, but also deepens the pleasure your partner can experience, making her more responsive to your touch and amplifying her overall arousal. The clitoral hood is a fold of skin that partially or fully covers the clitoris, protecting it and providing additional layers of sensation. This area is highly sensitive, and when massaged in the right way, it can intensify the pleasure leading to powerful orgasms. The key to mastering this technique lies in understanding the delicate balance between pressure, movement, and rhythm. Start by creating a relaxed and intimate atmosphere where your partner feels comfortable and at ease. This could involve setting the mood with soft lighting, gentle music, or simply taking the time to engage in foreplay that builds her anticipation. The Stoics understood that preparation and context are essential for any meaningful experience, and this is particularly true when it comes to physical intimacy. Once she is fully relaxed and aroused, begin by lightly tracing your fingers along the outer edges of her vulva, gradually moving towards the clitoral hood. Use the pads of your fingers to apply gentle pressure, moving in slow, circular motions. This initial touch should be light and teasing, designed to awaken her senses and increase blood flow to the area. Pay close attention to her body language and breathing, as these will guide you in adjusting your touch to her preferences. As you continue, start to focus more directly on the clitoral hood itself. Use your thumb and forefinger to gently grasp the hood, applying a gentle squeezing motion as you move in small circles. The key here is to maintain a consistent rhythm while varying the pressure slightly to keep her engaged. Some women may prefer a lighter touch, while others might enjoy a bit more pressure. The Stoics emphasized the importance of observation and adaptation in all endeavors, and this principle applies perfectly to the art of clitoral hood massage, by being attuned to her reactions, you can tailor your technique to what she finds most pleasurable. Another effective technique involves using a combination of your fingers and your tongue. After a few minutes of massaging with your fingers, you can introduce oral stimulation to enhance the experience. Gently flick your tongue over the clitoral hood, using a similar circular motion as with your fingers. The warmth and wetness of your tongue can add a new dimension of pleasure, making the sensations even more intense. Alternate between your fingers and tongue, creating a dynamic rhythm that keeps her on the edge of climax. One of the benefits of focusing on the clitoral hood is that it allows you to stimulate the clitoris indirectly, which can be particularly useful if your partner finds direct clitoral stimulation too intense or uncomfortable. By massaging the hood, you are still engaging the nerve endings in the clitoris, but in a way that spreads the sensation over a larger area, making it more manageable and enjoyable for her. As you continue, it's important to keep the pace steady, but not rushed. The goal is to build her arousal gradually, allowing the pleasure to intensify with each movement. This slow build-up is crucial for making the eventual orgasm more powerful and satisfying, the Stoics believed in the value of patience and perseverance, and these qualities are essential when mastering the art of clitoral hood massage.
By taking your time and focusing on her pleasure, you're showing her that you value her experience, which can deepen the emotional connection between you. Another important aspect to consider is lubrication. Natural lubrication is often sufficient, but depending on the circumstances, you might want to use additional lubricant to ensure that the massage is smooth and comfortable. The added slipperiness can enhance the sensation and reduce any potential discomfort, allowing you to apply a slightly firmer pressure without causing irritation. Always check in with your partner to make sure she's comfortable and enjoying the experience. As she approaches orgasm, you may notice her body tensing or her breathing quickening. These are signs that she's nearing climax, and this is where your control and technique really come into play. You can either maintain the same rhythm and pressure to guide her towards release, or you can increase the intensity slightly to push her over the edge. The choice depends on her preferences and your shared understanding of what she finds most pleasurable. The Stoics taught that wisdom comes from knowing when to act and when to hold back, and this principle is particularly relevant in the moments leading up to orgasm. After she reaches orgasm, don't immediately stop your movements. Gradually slow down, allowing her to come down from the peak of pleasure in a way that feels gentle and nurturing. This transition is important for maintaining the intimacy of the moment and ensuring that she feels fully satisfied and cared for. The clitoral hood massage, when done correctly, can lead to some of the most intense orgasms she's ever experienced, leaving her feeling both physically and emotionally fulfilled. In conclusion, mastering the art of clitoral hood massage requires a deep understanding of female anatomy, a keen awareness of your partner's reactions, and a commitment to her pleasure. By taking your time, varying your techniques, and maintaining clear communication, you can create an experience that not only satisfies her physically but also deepens the emotional connection between you. This technique, like many others, is about more than just physical pleasure, it's about creating a shared experience that brings you closer together, making every moment of intimacy more meaningful and fulfilling. Chapter 3. Exploring the Legs of the Clitoris The clitoris is a complex organ with more to it than meets the eye. While most people are familiar with the visible part of the clitoris, the internal structure is just as significant in terms of pleasure potential. The legs of the clitoris, also known as the crura, extend deep into the pelvic region and play a crucial role in female arousal. Understanding how to stimulate this area can open up new dimensions of pleasure for your partner, making your intimate encounters even more satisfying. The legs of the clitoris run along the sides of the vulva, extending downwards from the clitoral glands. These internal structures are highly sensitive and contribute to the overall sensation when the clitoris is stimulated. To effectively engage this part of the clitoris, it's important to combine different types of touch and pressure, creating a lead experience that stimulates both the internal and external parts of her anatomy. Start by positioning your fingers on either side of her vulva, just outside the labia. Use gentle pressure to massage the area, moving your fingers in slow, circular motions. The goal here is to stimulate the legs of the clitoris indirectly, while also building arousal through broader vulval stimulation. This technique can be particularly effective during foreplay, as it helps to increase blood flow to the entire genital area enhancing sensitivity and preparing her for more direct stimulation. As you continue, gradually increase the intensity of your touch. You can use your fingers to trace the outline of the labia, applying a bit more pressure as you move along the edges. This not only stimulates the legs of the clitoris, but also engages other sensitive areas, creating a more holistic experience of pleasure. The Stoics believed in the importance of balance and harmony, and this approach to stimulation reflects that philosophy. By engaging multiple parts of her anatomy simultaneously, you're creating a balanced and harmonious experience that heightens her arousal and deepens her pleasure. Another effective technique involves using a combination of your fingers and palm. After spending some time massaging with your fingers, Press the heel of your palm against her vulva, just above the pubic bone. 
Apply steady pressure as you move your hand in slow, deliberate circles. This motion engages the legs of the clitoris more directly, while also stimulating the surrounding tissue. The added pressure from your palm can intensify the sensation, making her more responsive to your touch. To take this technique to the next level, consider incorporating some light tapping or pulsing motions with your fingers. This can create a rhythmic sensation that mimics the natural pulsing of blood flow during arousal, amplifying her experience. The Stoics emphasized the power of rhythm and flow in achieving mastery, and this concept applies here as well. By creating a rhythmic pattern of stimulation, you can guide her towards a more intense and satisfying climax. As with all techniques, communication is key. Check in with your partner to see how she's feeling and whether she enjoys the sensation. Some women may find this type of stimulation to be incredibly arousing, while others might prefer a different approach. The Stoics valued wisdom and adaptability, and in the context of physical intimacy, this means being attuned to your partner's needs and adjusting your technique accordingly. If she responds positively, continue with your current approach. If not, be prepared to try something different or ask for guidance on what she prefers. In addition to manual stimulation, you can also incorporate oral techniques to enhance the experience. Using your tongue, gently trace the same path that your fingers have been following, focusing on the sides of the vulva and the area around the clitoral hood. The combination of oral and manual stimulation can create a lead effect that heightens her pleasure and makes her more receptive to deeper, more intense sensations. The legs of the clitoris are also highly responsive to temperature play. Consider using warm or cool sensations to add an extra dimension to your touch. For example, you can warm your hands before beginning the massage or use your breath to create a gentle, warm breeze over her vulva. Alternatively, you can experiment with cooling sensations by lightly blowing on the area or using an ice cube wrapped in a soft cloth. The contrast between warm and cool can be incredibly stimulating, adding variety and excitement to your intimate encounters. Chapter 4 – Breathing Life into Desire – The Power of Breath on the Clitoris The subtlety of breath can be one of the most overlooked yet profoundly powerful tools in the art of seduction. While many techniques focus on direct physical stimulation, the art of breathing on the clitoris offers a tantalizing form of indirect stimulation that can drive a woman to the heights of ecstasy. Understanding how to use breath to amplify her pleasure requires not only a delicate touch, but also an awareness of her responses, creating a deeply personal and intimate connection. Breathing on her clitoris may seem simple, but when done correctly, it can awaken her senses in a way that mere touch cannot achieve. This technique works by playing on the natural sensitivity of the clitoris and the surrounding area. The coolness of your breath contrasts with the warmth of her skin, creating a thrilling sensation that can heighten her arousal and anticipation. To begin, create a comfortable and relaxed environment where she feels safe and open to new experiences. Soft lighting, soothing music, and a warm room can set the stage for an intimate encounter. Start with gentle caresses and kisses on her inner thighs, gradually moving closer to her vulva. The goal is to build up anticipation and sensitivity before introducing the power of your breath. When you're ready to incorporate breath into your play, start by lightly blowing on the area surrounding her clitoris. This could be her inner thighs, her labia, or just above her clitoral hood. The sensation of your warm breath against her skin should be light and teasing, designed to send shivers down her spine. The key here is to be gentle, think of it as creating a breeze that tickles her senses rather than a strong gust of air. This subtlety is what makes the technique so effective as it taps into her body's natural response to delicate sensations. As you blow lightly on her clitoris, pay close attention to her body language. Is she reacting with a slight shiver, or is her breathing becoming more shallow and rapid? These are signs that the sensation is having the desired effect. The Stoics believed in the importance of observation and mindfulness, 
and this principle applies to the art of using breath to enhance pleasure. By being attuned to her reactions, you can adjust the intensity and duration of your breath to match her level of arousal. You can also experiment with varying the temperature of your breath. Warm breath, created by exhaling slowly through your mouth, can create a soothing and sensual experience. To contrast this, you can try a cooler breath by exhaling more quickly or by lightly blowing with your lips pursed. The alternation between warm and cool breath can create a dynamic and engaging sensation that keeps her on the edge of pleasure. This contrast not only stimulates her physically but also engages her mind as she anticipates the next sensation you'll deliver. Another technique involves combining breath with gentle touch. For instance, you could lightly trace your fingers around her clitoral hood while simultaneously breathing on her clitoris. The combination of tactile and breath stimulation can create a multisensory experience that is more intense than either technique alone. The Stoics understood that true mastery comes from the integration of different skills and techniques, and by combining breath with touch, you can elevate her experience to new heights. As you continue to breathe on her clitoris, gradually increase the intensity of your breath. You can move closer, allowing your breath to become warmer and more concentrated on the clitoral area. This can be particularly effective if she is already highly aroused, as the increased intensity can push her closer to orgasm. However, it's important to maintain a balance too much intensity too quickly can overwhelm her senses, so be sure to gauge her responses carefully. In addition to breath, you can introduce other forms of indirect stimulation, such as whispering softly in her ear while you're working your magic with your breath. Whispering sweet nothings, compliments, or even describing what you're going to do next can enhance the psychological aspect of the experience. The Stoics believed that words have power, and in this context, the right words can amplify the physical sensations and deepen her emotional connection to the experience. As she approaches orgasm, consider transitioning from breath to more direct forms of stimulation, such as using your tongue or fingers. The shift from the light, teasing sensation of breath to the more intense, focused touch can create a dramatic increase in pleasure, leading to a powerful climax. The Stoics taught that timing is everything, and knowing when to escalate your techniques is crucial to maximizing her pleasure. After she climaxes, allow her to come down slowly by continuing to breathe gently on her clitoris or by offering soothing touches. This can help her relax and fully enjoy the afterglow of the experience. The beauty of using breath as a form of stimulation is that it can be as light or as intense as you want it to be, making it a versatile tool in your arsenal of pleasure techniques. In conclusion, breathing on the clitoris is a subtle yet highly effective way to enhance a woman's pleasure. By mastering this technique, you can create an experience that is both physically and emotionally satisfying, deepening the connection between you and your partner. Like the Stoics, who value the integration of mind and body, this approach to pleasure emphasizes the importance of engaging all the senses, making every intimate moment more meaningful and fulfilling. Chapter 5, The Up and Down Method, A Dance of Sensation In the world of sexual techniques, the up and down method stands out as a timeless classic. It's a simple yet incredibly effective way to stimulate the clitoris, offering a rhythm and consistency that can drive a woman to the peak of pleasure. This method, when done correctly, can create a wave of sensation that builds and crescendos, leading to intense and deeply satisfying orgasms. The up and down method involves a rhythmic movement of your fingers or tongue along the length of the clitoris. The key to this technique is maintaining a steady pace and pressure, creating a consistent sensation that allows her arousal to build naturally. The simplicity of the movement belies its power. When done with intention and care, this method can unlock some of the most intense pleasure she's ever experienced. Begin by positioning yourself so that you have easy access to her clitoris. If you're using your fingers, you might want to start by gently spreading her labia to expose the clitoris fully. This allows for more direct stimulation and gives you greater control over your movements. 
The Stoics believed in the importance of preparation and precision, and this approach to the up and down method reflects that philosophy. Once you're in position, start with a light touch, gently moving your fingers or tongue up and down along the length of her clitoris. The movement should be smooth and fluid, without any jerky motions. Think of it as a dance, each stroke should flow seamlessly into the next, creating a continuous wave of sensation. The goal is to maintain a rhythm that she can sink into, allowing her to lose herself in the pleasure you're creating. As you continue, pay close attention to her responses. Is she arching her back? Is her breathing becoming more rapid? These are signs that your technique is working and that she's becoming more aroused. The Stoics valued mindfulness and presence, and this is particularly important when using the up and down method. By staying attuned to her reactions, you can adjust your pace and pressure to match her level of arousal, ensuring that she experiences the maximum amount of pleasure. One of the benefits of the up and down method is that it allows for a wide range of variations. You can experiment with different speeds, pressures, and angles to find what works best for her. For instance, you might start with slow, gentle strokes, gradually increasing the speed as her arousal builds. Or you might alternate between light, feathery touches and firmer, more intense strokes, creating a dynamic contrast that keeps her on the edge of climax. Another variation involves using different parts of your fingers or tongue to create different sensations. For example, you might use the pad of your finger for a broader, more diffuse sensation, then switch to the tip of your finger for a more focused, intense touch. Similarly, with your tongue, you can alternate between broad, flat strokes and more pointed, precise movements. The Stoics believed in the power of diversity and adaptability, and by varying your technique, you can keep the experience fresh and exciting for her. To enhance the experience even further, consider incorporating other forms of stimulation into the mix. For example, you could use your other hand to gently massage her breasts or thighs, or you could whisper words of encouragement or praise as you continue the up and down motion. The Stoics understood that true mastery involves the integration of multiple elements, and by combining different forms of stimulation, you can create a more holistic and satisfying experience. As she approaches orgasm, you may notice her body tensing and her breathing becoming more erratic. This is a sign that she's on the verge of climax, and it's important to maintain your rhythm and intensity to guide her over the edge. The up and down method is particularly effective in this regard because it provides a consistent, reliable sensation that she can focus on as she builds towards orgasm. The Stoics taught that consistency and perseverance are key to achieving any goal, and in this context, your steady, rhythmic movements can help her achieve one of the most powerful orgasms of her life. After she climaxes, allow her a few moments to catch her breath and come down from the high. You can continue with light, soothing strokes to help her relax, or you can transition to a different form of touch to prolong the pleasure. The beauty of the up and down method is its versatility. It can be as intense or as gentle as you want it to be, making it suitable for any stage of the sexual experience. Chapter 6, Circular Motions, Unleashing a New Dimension of Pleasure. When it comes to stimulating the clitoris, circular motions introduce an entirely new dimension of pleasure. This technique harnesses the power of gentle rotations to activate different parts of the clitoris providing a varied and comprehensive stimulation that can lead to profound sexual satisfaction. The beauty of circular motions lies in their ability to combine rhythm with versatility, making this method a favorite for many women. The circular motion technique involves moving your fingers or tongue in a circular pattern around the clitoris. Unlike the up and down method, which focuses on linear movement, circular motions cover a broader area, stimulating different parts of the clitoris and its surrounding tissue. This holistic approach can awaken new sensations as the constant change in direction and pressure keeps the experience dynamic and engaging. To begin, position yourself comfortably, ensuring you have full access to her clitoral area. 
Start with light, teasing strokes to warm her up, building anticipation before you introduce the circular motions. When ready, gently place your fingers or tongue at the base of her clitoral hood and begin making small, slow circles. The circles should be fluid and continuous, with no abrupt stops or changes in direction. Think of it as drawing invisible circles on her skin, each one creating ripples of pleasure that radiate outward. As you continue, experiment with the size of the circles. Small, tight circles can create a concentrated sensation directly on the clitoris, while larger circles can stimulate the entire vulva, adding variety to the experience. The Stoics believed in balance and moderation, and in this context, finding the right balance between small and large circles can enhance her pleasure without overwhelming her senses. One of the advantages of circular motions is that they allow you to explore different parts of the clitoris. The clitoris is more than just the visible glands, it extends internally, with nerve endings that can be accessed through the surrounding tissue. By varying the placement of your circles, you can stimulate not just the clitoral head, but also the sides and base, providing a fuller and more immersive experience. The Stoics taught that understanding the full scope of a situation is key to mastery, and by exploring all aspects of the clitoris, you can help her achieve deeper and more intense pleasure. Pay close attention to her body language and vocal responses as you move through the circular motions. If she begins to moan or shift her hips in rhythm with your movements, it's a sign that you're hitting the right spots. You can increase the speed and pressure slightly to intensify the sensation, but be careful not to overdo it. Too much intensity too quickly can be overwhelming. The Stoics valued patience and control, and these principles are essential when applying this technique. Another way to enhance the circular motions is by introducing variation in direction. You can start by moving clockwise, then switch to counterclockwise, or even alternate between the two. This change in direction can create a new sensation as her body adjusts to the different angle of stimulation. The unpredictability of the motion keeps her mind engaged, adding an element of surprise that can heighten her arousal. Combining circular motions with other techniques can also elevate the experience. For instance, you could alternate between circular motions and the up and down method, creating a dynamic interplay of sensations. Or you could use your other hand to stimulate her G-spot simultaneously combining external and internal stimulation for a more intense orgasm. The Stoics understood the importance of synergy. By integrating different techniques, you can create a more powerful and holistic experience. As she approaches climax, you might notice her body responding more strongly to the circular motions. Her muscles may tense and her breathing may become more rapid. This is the moment to maintain a steady pace guiding her to the peak of her pleasure. The continuous, rhythmic nature of the circular motions can help her focus on the sensation, allowing her to lose herself in the moment. The Stoics believed in the power of consistency, and this principle applies here. By keeping the motion steady and deliberate, you can lead her to a satisfying and powerful orgasm. After she climaxes, allow her a moment to relax and enjoy the afterglow. You can continue with gentle circular motions, gradually decreasing in intensity to help her come down from the high. The circular motion technique is versatile and adaptable, making it a valuable tool in your sexual repertoire. In conclusion, circular motions offer a unique and effective way to stimulate the clitoris, combining rhythm with versatility to create a deeply satisfying experience. By mastering this technique, you can provide your partner with a rich and varied sexual experience that engages both body and mind, deepening your connection and enhancing your intimacy. Chapter 7. The Clitoral Hug, Encapsulating Pleasure The clitoral hug is a technique that focuses on surrounding the clitoris with gentle, encompassing pressure, creating a sensation of warmth and security that can lead to profound arousal and pleasure. This method is particularly effective for women who enjoy a more enveloping form of stimulation as it combines the power of pressure with the intimacy of a close, personal touch. 
The clitoral hug involves using your fingers, lips, or both to softly press around the clitoris, creating a cocoon of sensation that can heighten her arousal. The key to this technique is to apply even, consistent pressure without overwhelming the sensitive area. The Stoics believed in the importance of balance and harmony, and the clitoral hug embodies these principles by offering a sensation that is both intense and comforting. To start, ensure that she is fully aroused and relaxed. The clitoral hug works best when her clitoris is already sensitive and engorged, as this allows the pressure to have a more pronounced effect. Begin by gently caressing her vulva, warming up the area before moving on to the clitoris. When you're ready, use your thumb and forefinger to softly encircle her clitoris, applying gentle pressure as if you were holding a delicate object. The idea is to create a sensation of being held, which can be incredibly arousing for many women. As you hold her clitoris, start with small, gentle squeezes, releasing and reapplying pressure in a slow, rhythmic pattern. The goal is to create a steady, pulsing sensation that she can sink into, allowing her to focus on the pleasure you're providing. The Stoics valued rhythm and consistency, and these elements are crucial in the clitoral hug technique. You can enhance the sensation by adding a slight rocking motion with your hand, moving it back and forth while maintaining the pressure. This creates a dynamic experience, as the pressure shifts slightly with each movement, stimulating different parts of the clitoris. The Stoics taught that variety with inconsistency can lead to mastery, and by varying your movements while maintaining pressure, you can keep the experience engaging and exciting. Another variation involves using your lips instead of your fingers. Place your lips around her clitoris as if you were giving it a gentle kiss and apply soft suction. This creates a warm, enveloping sensation that many women find deeply satisfying. You can alternate between using your lips and fingers or combine the two for a more intense experience. The Stoics believed in the power of adaptability and by using different parts of your body, you can provide a more comprehensive and fulfilling experience. Pay attention to her responses as you apply the clitoral hug. If she starts to moan or her breathing becomes more rapid, it's a sign that the technique is working. You can increase the intensity slightly by squeezing a little harder or adding more suction, but be careful not to go too far. This technique is about gentle, encompassing pressure, not force. The Stoics valued moderation, and in this context, less is often more. The clitoral hug can be particularly effective when combined with other forms of stimulation. For example, you could use your other hand to stimulate her G-spot or to caress her breasts, creating a full-body experience that enhances her pleasure. The Stoics believed in the integration of different elements to achieve a harmonious result, and by combining the clitoral hug with other techniques, you can create a more powerful and holistic experience. As she approaches orgasm, maintain the pressure and rhythm, guiding her to the peak of her pleasure. The clitoral hug is especially effective at creating deep, internal orgasms, as the steady pressure can lead to a more profound release. The Stoics understood the importance of persistence and focus, and by staying consistent with your movements, you can help her achieve a deeply satisfying climax. After she climaxes, continue to hold her clitoris gently as she comes down from the high. The clitoral hug can provide a comforting sensation even after orgasm, helping her to relax and enjoy the afterglow. The warmth and security of the clitoral hug make it a powerful tool in your sexual repertoire, offering a way to connect deeply with your partner while providing intense pleasure. In conclusion, the clitoral hug is a technique that combines the power of pressure with the intimacy of close contact, creating a deeply satisfying experience for both partners. By mastering this technique, you can offer your partner a unique form of stimulation that is both comforting and arousing, deepening your connection and enhancing your sexual relationship. The Stoics believed in the importance of balance and harmony, and the clitoral hug embodies these principles providing a sensation that is as emotionally fulfilling as it is physically pleasurable. Chapter 8, The Direct Approach, Mastering Targeted Stimulation 
direct stimulation of the clitoris is often viewed as the most straightforward method of pleasuring a woman, yet it's a technique that requires a delicate balance of pressure, rhythm, and sensitivity to truly master. The clitoris is a highly sensitive organ, packed with thousands of nerve endings, making it the epicenter of female sexual pleasure. The key to effective direct stimulation lies in understanding how to engage this sensitivity without overwhelming it, creating an experience that is both intensely pleasurable and deeply satisfying. The direct approach involves focusing your attention directly on the clitoral glands, the visible part of the clitoris. This small but mighty organ is the most sensitive part of a woman's body, and when stimulated correctly, it can lead to powerful orgasms. However, because of its sensitivity, direct stimulation must be approached with care and precision. The Stoics understood that true mastery comes from the ability to apply just the right amount of effort, and this principle is crucial when it comes to direct clitoral stimulation. To begin, make sure she is fully aroused before you start applying direct stimulation. The clitoris becomes more sensitive as arousal builds, so starting too early can be uncomfortable or even painful. Warm her up with other techniques, such as kissing, touching, or using indirect stimulation like the circular motions discussed earlier. Once she is sufficiently aroused, you can move on to direct stimulation. Position yourself comfortably so that you have full control over your movements. Gently place your fingers or tongue directly on her clitoral glands, starting with light, soft strokes. The key here is to begin slowly, allowing her body to adjust to the direct contact. Pay close attention to her reactions. If she seems to pull away or tense up, it might be a sign that the pressure is too intense. The Stoics believed in the importance of moderation, and in this context, starting slow and gradually building intensity is the best approach. As you continue, you can begin to increase the pressure slightly, but always be mindful of her comfort. Some women prefer a very light touch, while others enjoy more firm pressure. Communication is essential here, don't be afraid to ask her what feels best. The Stoics valued wisdom and understanding, and applying these principles to your sexual encounters will ensure that both you and your partner have a fulfilling experience. The rhythm of your movements is also crucial in direct stimulation. Consistent, steady strokes are often the most effective as they allow her to sink into the sensation and build toward orgasm. However, you can also introduce some variation to keep things interesting. Try alternating between slow and fast strokes or experiment with different pressures to see what elicits the strongest response. The Stoics believed in adaptability, and being able to adjust your technique based on her feedback will make you a more attentive and skilled lover. One of the challenges of direct clitoral stimulation is maintaining the right level of intensity without overstimulating the clitoris. Because the clitoris is so sensitive, too much stimulation can lead to discomfort or numbness, which can quickly diminish the pleasure. To avoid this, be sure to vary your technique alternate between direct stimulation and other forms of touch, such as massaging the surrounding vulva or using circular motions. This variation prevents overstimulation and keeps the experience dynamic and enjoyable. Another way to enhance direct stimulation is by using lubrication. The clitoris can become more sensitive as arousal builds, and a little extra lubrication can make the experience more comfortable and pleasurable. You can use a water-based lubricant or even her natural lubrication, just be sure to apply it gently and evenly. The Stoics taught that preparation and foresight are key to success, and taking the time to ensure proper lubrication is a simple but important step in maximizing pleasure. As she nears orgasm, maintain a steady rhythm and be attentive to her cues. You might notice her breathing becoming more rapid, her muscles tensing, or her hips moving in sync with your movements. These are signs that she is close to climax, and it's important to stay consistent to guide her over the edge. The Stoics valued perseverance, and in this context, maintaining your focus and rhythm will lead to a more satisfying orgasm for her. After she climaxes, 
Continue with gentle, soothing strokes to help her come down from the high. The post-orgasmic phase is a time for relaxation and connection, and maintaining physical contact can help deepen your bond. The Stoics believed in the importance of connection and emotional fulfillment, and by staying present and attentive, you can enhance the emotional intimacy of your sexual experience. In conclusion, direct stimulation of the clitoris is a powerful technique that, when done correctly, can lead to intense pleasure and deep satisfaction. By mastering the balance of pressure, rhythm, and sensitivity, you can provide your partner with a fulfilling sexual experience that honors both her physical and emotional needs. The Stoics taught that true mastery comes from understanding and moderation, and by applying these principles to your sexual encounters, you can become a more skilled and attentive lover. Chapter 9, Heart Opener, A Pathway to Deeper Connection. The final technique in our exploration of female pleasure is one that transcends physical stimulation and touches the very core of emotional intimacy, the heart opener. This method is about creating a connection that goes beyond the physical act of sex, fostering a deep sense of trust, vulnerability, and love between you and your partner. The heart opener is not just about making her feel good, it's about making her feel seen, valued, and cherished, which in turn can lead to the most profound and satisfying sexual experiences. The concept of the heart opener is rooted in the idea that true sexual satisfaction comes from a place of emotional connection. The Stoics believed that the mind and body are deeply interconnected, and that true pleasure is achieved when both are fully engaged. The heart opener technique involves creating an environment of safety and trust where your partner feels comfortable enough to fully express herself and explore her desires. To begin, set the stage by creating a space that is comfortable, private, and free from distractions. This could be as simple as lighting some candles, playing soft music, or ensuring that you won't be interrupted. The goal is to create an atmosphere where she can relax and feel completely at ease. The Stoics valued the importance of environment and context, and in this case, setting the right mood is essential for the heart opener to be effective. Once the environment is set, start by engaging in activities that build emotional intimacy. This could include deep, meaningful conversation, sharing your thoughts and feelings, or even just holding each other close. The key is to create a sense of connection and understanding where both of you feel emotionally aligned and in tune with each other. The Stoics believed in the power of connection, and by prioritizing emotional intimacy, you lay the foundation for a more fulfilling physical connection. When you're ready to move into physical touch, start with gentle, loving caresses that are more about connection than stimulation. The goal here is not to rush into sexual activity, but to build a sense of closeness and trust. You might begin by softly stroking her hair, kissing her forehead, or simply holding her hand. These small gestures of affection can create a powerful sense of security and love, which in turn can enhance her arousal and readiness for more intimate touch. As you continue, you can gradually introduce more sensual touches, always being mindful of her responses. The heart opener technique is about being fully present and attentive to her needs both physical and emotional. Pay attention to her body language, her breathing, and any verbal cues she gives. The Stoics believed in the importance of mindfulness, and by staying fully present, you can create a deeper connection that enhances the sexual experience for both of you. One of the key aspects of the heart opener is the concept of giving and receiving pleasure in a way that feels mutually fulfilling. This means being open to her desires and needs, and being willing to explore them together. It also means being vulnerable yourself, sharing your own desires, and allowing her to take the lead at times. The Stoics taught that true strength comes from vulnerability, and by being open and honest with each other, you can create a more balanced and harmonious sexual experience. As the physical connection deepens, you can integrate other techniques, such as the ones discussed in previous chapters, to enhance the experience. However, the focus should always remain on maintaining that emotional connection. 
The heart opener is not just about reaching orgasm, it's about deepening your bond and creating a space where both of you feel loved and valued. When she reaches climax, hold her close and continue to provide gentle, comforting touches. The post-orgasmic phase is a time of great vulnerability and maintaining physical and emotional contact can help strengthen the connection you've built. The Stoics believed in the importance of nurturing relationships and by staying close after the physical act, you can reinforce the emotional bond that will carry over into other aspects of your relationship. In conclusion, the heart opener is a technique that transcends the physical act of sex and touches the very core of emotional intimacy. By creating an environment of safety, trust, and love, you can foster a deeper connection that enhances both the physical and emotional aspects of your sexual relationship. The Stoics taught that true fulfillment comes from the harmony of mind and body, and by applying these principles to your sexual encounters, you can create a more satisfying and meaningful connection with your partner. As we've journeyed through these nine powerful techniques, it's clear that mastering female pleasure goes far beyond mere physical touch. It's about understanding the intricate balance between the mind and body, anticipation and release, connection and trust. The Stoics, in their wisdom, recognized that true mastery of any art form, including the art of love, requires patience, mindfulness, and a deep understanding of human nature. By incorporating these techniques into your intimate moments, you not only enhance her pleasure, but also deepen the emotional bond between you. Whether it's the subtlety of teasing over the pants, the precision of direct stimulation, or the profound connection fostered by the heart opener, each move is a step toward a more fulfilling and meaningful relationship. Remember, these techniques are not just about making her scream with pleasure, they're about building trust, creating intimacy, and ultimately, forming a connection that goes beyond the physical. As you practice and refine these skills, you'll find that the benefits extend into every aspect of your relationship, bringing you closer together in ways you may not have imagined. Before we wrap up, I encourage you to reflect on these lessons and apply them with intention and care. And as always, if you've enjoyed this episode, please watch until the end and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your thoughts and experiences. Your stories and feedback help us all learn and grow together. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. For centuries, the Stoics devoted themselves to understanding human nature, including the psychology of women. While their teachings are often associated with self-control and resilience, their deep understanding of human connection, emotion, and behavior allowed them to develop strategies for building powerful and intimate relationships. In today's world, many of these ancient insights remain as relevant as ever, especially when it comes to creating explosive moments of connection that leave a lasting impression. In this episode, we will explore seven mind-blowing moves that have been refined through the wisdom of the Stoics, designed to make any woman feel deeply connected, appreciated, and emotionally moved. By mastering these techniques, you'll be able to foster an intimate connection that resonates on a deeper level. But remember, this isn't about manipulation, it's about understanding and connection. Each move is a way to show respect and care, and if done right, will leave her feeling completely shaken in the best possible way. Make sure to watch the video until the end, as each move builds upon the last, creating a seamless and unforgettable experience. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment about your own experiences. If you've ever tried any of these moves or have your own stories to share, we would love to hear from you. Now, let's dive into these seven explosive moves. Chapter 1. Create a Sacred Space for Connection Creating the perfect environment is an art form, and when done right, it can elevate any experience from ordinary to extraordinary. The Stoics, who believed that our surroundings greatly impact our inner world, would tell you that crafting the right atmosphere is not just about physical comfort, but also about emotional resonance. The space you create for her should feel like a sanctuary, a place where she can let her guard down, feel cherished, and embrace the moment fully. 
It's about crafting a safe haven where she's free to be herself and open to the experience you're about to share. The first step in creating this sacred space is to remove distractions. This is your time with her, and she needs to feel that nothing else matters in this moment. Turn off your phone, dim the lights, and make sure the room is clean and inviting. The Stoics would urge you to approach this task with mindfulness, as even the smallest details can have a profound impact. Think about the lighting. Soft, warm hues are ideal for creating a calm and intimate mood. Harsh lighting can kill the vibe, while too much darkness can make her feel uneasy. A few candles or string lights can work wonders in transforming the atmosphere. The next element is scent. Our sense of smell is deeply tied to memory and emotion, and the right fragrance can instantly set a romantic and calming tone. Essential oils like lavender, jasmine, or vanilla are perfect for invoking relaxation and sensuality. You can use a diffuser or simply light a few scented candles, but make sure the scent is subtle, not overpowering. The key is to create an environment that engages all of her senses without overwhelming any of them. Now, think about the textures in the room. The Stoics believed in living in harmony with nature, so opt for natural fabrics like soft cotton, linen, or even silk for pillows, blankets, or throws. The goal is to make her feel enveloped in comfort. Arrange the seating or lounging area so that it feels inviting. Whether it's a couch, bed, or floor cushions, ensure that it's a space where she can relax completely. Music is another essential component of creating the right atmosphere. Choose something that sets the mood but doesn't dominate the space. Gentle instrumental music, ambient sounds, or something slow and soothing can help her unwind and let go of any lingering stress. The Stoics would advise you to be deliberate in your choices, focusing on the effect each sound, sight, and scent has on her mood. But beyond the physical space, what's even more important is the emotional space you create. From the moment she steps into this environment, she should feel that this space is solely for her. It's a space where she is not just welcome, but the center of your attention. The Stoics value presence, being fully in the moment, and that's exactly what you need to communicate to her. Your energy, your attention, and your intention should all align to make her feel like she's the most important person in the world at that moment. This goes beyond compliments or flattery. It's about genuinely focusing on her needs, desires, and emotions. As she enters the space, guide her gently. Invite her to sit or lie down in the most comfortable spot and ask her how she's feeling. Offer her a glass of water, tea, or wine, something that makes her feel tended to without overwhelming her. The Stoics would remind you that patience is a virtue, so resist the temptation to rush. Allow her to adjust to the surroundings at her own pace. If she seems hesitant, reassure her subtly, letting her know that this space is hers to enjoy. Once she's comfortable, this is where the magic truly begins. Your care and attention to detail have already begun to relax her, allowing her to feel safe. This safety is the bedrock of trust, and trust is where true intimacy begins. You've shown her that you can create an environment where she's valued and cherished, setting the stage for what comes next. In the Stoic tradition, creating a sacred space is about much more than arranging objects in a room. It's about creating the emotional atmosphere that fosters connection, trust, and vulnerability. By showing her that you've carefully crafted this experience with her in mind, you've laid the groundwork for an unforgettable night. You've already begun to blow her mind by showing that you're willing to invest time and effort into her experience. Remember, this isn't about impressing her with flashy gestures or grand displays. It's about making her feel seen, heard, and understood. This is the foundation for everything that follows. By creating a sacred space where she feels both physically and emotionally safe, you've already taken the first step toward creating a powerful, intimate connection that will leave a lasting impact on her. Chapter 2. Warm-Up Touch – The Art of Gentle Connection 
Once you've created a sacred space for her to feel comfortable, the next step is mastering the art of touch. The Stoics believed that physical contact, when done with intention and care, could communicate what words sometimes could not. In this case, warm-up touch is all about building a connection that feels natural, respectful, and gradually more intimate. It's a way to show her that you're tuned into her needs, paying attention to her reactions, and willing to take your time to make her feel at ease. Begin with light, non-intrusive touches. These are not yet about sexual connection, they're about letting her feel your presence in a calming, reassuring way. Lightly brush her hand, shoulder, or back as you talk. The key here is subtlety, small, gentle touches that signal warmth and care. Stoic wisdom teaches us the importance of moderation, and in this context, it's about pacing. Don't rush into anything too intense. Instead, let your hands move slowly and deliberately, as if you are speaking a new language with your touch. Pay close attention to how she responds. Some women may immediately relax into your touch, while others might need more time. The Stoics taught us that each person's temperament is different and that wisdom is particularly relevant here. Be patient and observe her body language. Is she leaning into your touch? Does she seem to relax as you gently place your hand on her back? Or is she a bit tense? needing more time to adjust? The Stoics would remind you to adapt based on the situation, don't impose your pace on her, but instead respond to her comfort levels. Once you've established a rhythm of gentle, calming touch, you can start to increase the intimacy slightly. Move from simply brushing her hand or arm to gently stroking her back, always being mindful of her reactions. Slow movements across her skin help her body and mind relax even more, allowing her to ease into the moment. Remember, your touch should be tender, thoughtful, and in sync with the calm environment you've created. The Stoics believed in the power of intentional actions, and here, the intention is to build trust and create a deeper emotional connection through physical contact. You might be tempted to move too quickly into deeper touch, but Stoicism reminds us to practice patience. Each movement should be slow and deliberate, allowing her to feel every sensation and appreciate your care. If she relaxes into your touch, you can begin to add a bit more pressure, letting your hands linger on her shoulders or the base of her neck. The warmth of your hands, combined with the softness of the environment you've created, will help her feel cherished and cared for. It's important to remember that this is not just about physical pleasure, it's about creating an emotional connection through touch. The Stoics emphasized the importance of connecting on deeper levels, and this kind of warm-up touch allows for that. You're not rushing toward an end goal, you're taking your time to make sure she feels valued in the process. As you continue with these gentle, mindful touches, don't forget to communicate. A soft whisper, Perhaps asking if the pressure is just right or if she's comfortable can help her feel even more connected to you. Stoicism teaches us the value of dialogue, even in moments of intimacy. It shows that you're not just touching her for the sake of it, but that you genuinely care about how she's feeling. The warmth and softness of your touch will set the stage for what comes next, easing her into a space where she can fully relax and trust you. You've established a rhythm of touch that is soothing, deliberate, and comforting, a touch that says, I'm here for you, and I'm not rushing. By the time you move on to more intimate forms of contact, she will already feel deeply connected to you, both physically and emotionally. Chapter 3. The Power of the Back Massage The back is one of the most tension-filled areas of the body, and a well-delivered back massage can do more than just relax her muscles, it can create a profound sense of emotional release and connection. The Stoics understood the significance of physical and emotional balance, advocating for attention to the body's cues. In this context, a back massage not only helps you relieve her tension, but also deepens your connection by tuning into her subtle physical and emotional responses. Start by positioning yourself behind her, placing your hands gently on her back without applying pressure just yet. 
Allow her to feel the warmth of your hands, which creates a calming sensation and signals that you're about to take care of her. As you begin the massage, use soft, circular motions, starting at her shoulders, the area that often holds the most stress. Let your fingertips work gently, releasing knots while helping her ease into the moment. As you continue, move gradually down her back, focusing on her mid and lower back. The Stoics believed in the importance of mindfulness, and during this process, you should stay completely attuned to her body's reactions. Is she breathing more deeply? Is she relaxing into your touch? These subtle cues will guide you in adjusting your pressure and pace, allowing you to meet her needs perfectly. The goal is to create a rhythm that aligns with her breathing, amplifying the soothing effects of the massage. Pay attention to areas where she seems to respond more positively. For example, if her body relaxes significantly when you touch her lower back, spend more time in that area using slow, deliberate movements to enhance the sensation of comfort. As you massage, be mindful of the pressure you're applying. While a deeper massage can release built-up tension, it's essential to remain gentle. The Stoics emphasized the value of moderation, and here, your touch should never feel overwhelming, but rather nurturing and thoughtful. Transitioning to the neck and upper shoulders can add another layer of relaxation. These areas are highly sensitive, and gentle kneading here can enhance the experience, helping her unwind further. Keep the pace slow and steady, never rushing through any part of the massage. By maintaining this mindful, patient approach, you communicate that this moment is about her well-being, showing her that you are fully present and attentive. In the midst of the back massage, you're also sending silent messages of care, attentiveness, and emotional availability. The Stoics would advise you to embrace the act of giving without expecting anything in return, simply focusing on providing a sense of peace and relaxation. By the time you've finished, she should feel lighter, more at ease, and emotionally connected to you. The back masai isn't just a physical gesture, it's a way to cultivate a deeper emotional connection. Through each motion, you're showing her that she's valued, appreciated, and cared for qualities that leave a lasting impression. By staying present, attentive, and patient, you create an experience that blows her mind, not just through touch, but through the emotional bond you're strengthening with every stroke. Chapter 4 Neck and Shoulder Massage Following the back massage, the neck and shoulders are natural areas to continue building intimacy. These areas often hold emotional and physical tension, and by relieving that tension, you are not only helping her relax, but also creating an opening for deeper emotional connection. The Stoics believe that true mastery comes from balance, and here, it's about balancing pressure with tenderness. The neck and shoulders are highly sensitive regions, and a gentle, intentional touch here can have a profound impact, both physically and emotionally. Begin with her shoulders, placing your hands lightly on them before applying gentle pressure with your thumbs. Focus on kneading the muscles slowly, releasing the knots of tension that are likely building up from daily stress. Use circular motions or soft, pressing strokes to ease the muscles, but remember that this is not a race. Keep the movements deliberate and unhurried, allowing her to savor each touch. You want her to feel the full effect of your care in each motion, making her more relaxed with every passing moment. The Stoics taught the value of mindfulness, and this practice allows you to tune into her responses, adjusting pressure or speed based on what feels best for her. When you transition to her neck, do so with even more gentleness. The neck is incredibly sensitive, and it's essential to approach it with care. Use your fingertips to trace soft lines down her neck, applying light pressure while paying close attention to her response. This is where your attunement to her physical cues is vital. A relaxed sigh, a deep breath, or even subtle body language can tell you when you're helping her melt deeper into the moment. Slow down the pace even further as you focus on massaging the base of her neck, where tension often builds up. Move your fingers in slow, 
circular patterns, occasionally varying the pressure to keep her engaged and comfortable. The Stoics often reminded us of the importance of patience, and this part of the experience is all about taking your time. Don't rush. Allow her to close her eyes, fall into the rhythm of your touch, and let the moment become a peaceful escape. By calming her mind and body, you are creating a space for her to fully trust and connect with you on a deeper level. One of the powerful aspects of this neck and shoulder massage is its ability to open her up emotionally. The shoulders are where many people carry the weight of the world, and by relieving that tension, you're helping her feel lighter and more open to the emotional connection between you two. The touch should convey care, comfort, and intimacy, an unspoken message that she is safe and cherished in your presence. The Stoic spoke of action as the purest form of communication, and here, your touch speaks louder than words. As you massage her shoulders, be aware that this is not just about relaxation. The neck and shoulders are intimate areas, and your ability to handle them with care will significantly strengthen the bond between you two. Use your touch to show her that she is the focus of your attention and that her comfort is your priority. This step is about trust, and the more attentive you are to her needs, the more she will feel at ease, deepening the emotional connection between you. Once she's fully relaxed, you can extend the massage down her arms or back to her shoulders, gently creating a sense of flow and continuity. This slow, rhythmic motion fosters an environment of trust, helping her feel even more secure and valued. You might even find that she responds to your touch with subtle gestures, like leaning into your hands or letting out contented sighs, signaling her increasing comfort and trust. By the end of the neck and shoulder massage, you will have created a deeper sense of intimacy, one built not only on physical connection, but emotional trust as well. The key is your attentiveness and patience. The Stoics believed that small actions, when done with great intention, could move mountains, and in this context, your touch is the action that builds a strong foundation of intimacy and trust. Chapter 5. Leg Massage After focusing on the back, neck, and shoulders, the next step in creating an unforgettable experience is a soothing leg massage. The legs carry a lot of tension and strain from daily life, and by giving them the attention they deserve, you're helping her feel completely relaxed and cared for. The Stoics taught that every part of the body plays a role in our emotional and physical well-being, and in this case, the legs are not just functional, they are pathways to deeper relaxation and intimacy. Start by positioning her comfortably, whether she's lying on her back or stomach. Gently place your hands on her thighs, allowing her to feel your touch before applying any pressure. Use slow, sweeping motions with your palms to warm up the muscles, ensuring you cover the entire length of her legs. The key here is to be patient and deliberate. The Stoics believed in taking one's time, and this is no different. Your slow, intentional movements help her unwind and feel more connected to you. As you work your way down her thighs, apply gentle pressure with your fingers, working out any knots or areas of tension. Pay special attention to the upper legs, where people often store tension from walking, sitting, or standing. This is not about rushing to the next area, it's about being present with each movement and focusing entirely on her comfort. By dedicating your full attention to this area, you're signaling that her well-being is your priority, just as the Stoics emphasized the importance of living with focus and presence. Once you reach her calves, transition into smaller, more detailed movements. Use your thumbs to trace circles around her calves, applying light pressure to the muscle tissue. Calves often carry significant tension, so slow, rhythmic motions can help her feel more at ease. The Stoics believed in balance, and your massage should reflect this, balancing firm pressure with soft strokes to keep her engaged, but relaxed. Pay attention to her breathing as you continue the massage. If you notice her breathing deepens, it's a good sign that she's relaxing into the experience. This is where mindfulness comes in. Stay attuned to her reactions and adjust your technique as needed. 
If she seems to enjoy a particular area, spend a little more time there. The goal is not just to relieve physical tension, but to create a space where she feels completely safe and nurtured. As you finish with the calves, gently massage her feet. This is an area rich with nerve endings, and a soft, attentive touch here can feel incredibly soothing. Use your thumbs to press into the arches of her feet, applying just enough pressure to release tension without overwhelming her. The Stoics believe that the smallest actions can have the biggest impact, and this is your chance to create an unforgettable moment of connection through touch. By the end of the leg massage, her entire body should feel relaxed and at ease. This is about more than just physical relief, it's about showing her that you care for every part of her, from head to toe. The attention you give to her legs creates a full-body experience that leaves her feeling both physically refreshed and emotionally valued. You've now set the stage for an even deeper connection, one built on trust, attentiveness, and genuine care. Chapter 6, But and Breast Massage, Deepening Trust and Intimacy Moving into more intimate areas like the buttocks and breasts requires a heightened level of trust, care, and sensitivity. These areas are not only deeply personal, but can also evoke a range of emotions, from vulnerability to heightened connection. How you approach these areas can either build upon or diminish the trust you've cultivated so far. The Stoics believe that true strength lies in vulnerability, and by handling these intimate areas with tenderness, respect, and attentiveness, you create an environment where she feels emotionally and physically safe. Begin the massage of the buttocks by using slow, circular motions with the palms of your hands. This area often carries tension from prolonged sitting, stress, or physical activity, and a soothing massage here can be incredibly relaxing. Use your entire hand to apply pressure gently, making sure that the motion feels natural and smooth. Keep the strokes broad and deliberate, always avoiding sudden or sharp movements. This is an opportunity to embody the stoic principle of patience, allowing the massage to unfold gradually. The key is to focus on creating a calm, flowing rhythm that helps her unwind. As you work on the buttocks, remain mindful of her comfort level. Check in with her using subtle cues, whether it's through her body language or a soft, quiet word. If she tenses or shifts, slow down and adjust your pressure. The goal is not to rush or force any kind of reaction, but to ensure that she feels comfortable, relaxed, and in control of the situation. This attention to her comfort is an essential aspect of building trust, which is foundational to the intimacy you're sharing. As she begins to relax more deeply, you can gradually transition to a breast massage. The breasts are highly sensitive, both physically and emotionally, so it's crucial to approach this area with a heightened sense of respect and care. Begin by gently placing your hands on either side of her chest, allowing her to become accustomed to your touch without applying any pressure. The warmth of your hands alone can be comforting, signaling your attentiveness without overwhelming her. Using light, circular motions, massage around the breasts with gentle care, the focus here should be on providing a soothing, nurturing experience, rather than a stimulating one. Soft, sweeping motions with your fingertips are ideal for creating a relaxing and intimate sensation. Avoid applying too much pressure, as this could shift the experience from comforting to uncomfortable. The Stoics believed in the importance of balance, and here, the balance is between intimacy and respect. Your touch should convey that you are present and mindful, that your focus is on her comfort and emotional well-being, not just on the physical sensations. Throughout the massage, be attuned to her body language. If she seems to relax further into the experience, you can extend the massage, slowly increasing the range of your motions while maintaining a gentle, continuous flow. This attentiveness is key. The Stoics often emphasized mindfulness in every action, and this is your opportunity to practice it. Stay fully present, focusing on how each movement affects her comfort and relaxation. By doing so, you create a deeper, more meaningful connection. In this phase of the massage, 
It's important to recognize that you are not just fostering physical relaxation, you are also reinforcing the emotional trust that has been building throughout the experience. The delicate handling of intimate areas like the breasts and buttocks requires a sensitivity that transcends the physical. It's about ensuring that she feels safe, valued, and cared for on every level. As you continue, take your time and allow her to dictate the pace with her responses. If she feels more relaxed, you can slightly intensify the massage, but always remain within the bounds of what she's comfortable with. This is a powerful moment where your actions, your slowness, your patience, your attentiveness signal to her that she can trust you completely. By the end of this massage, you will have created an intimate and unforgettable experience. The careful, attentive way you've handled these sensitive areas will not only leave her feeling physically relaxed, but will also deepen the emotional bond between you two. She will feel cherished, valued, and, most importantly, safe. This kind of trust is what makes an experience truly special, something that lingers long after the physical sensations fade. Through your touch, you've communicated care, respect, and attentiveness, leaving her with an impression that goes far beyond the massage itself. The trust you've built through your actions will deepen your connection, fostering a bond that is both intimate and lasting. Chapter 7 – Yoni Mapping Yoni mapping is an ancient practice rooted in the idea of connecting with a woman's body on a deeper level, not just physically but emotionally and spiritually as well. The Stoics taught that true wisdom comes from understanding the whole self, and yoni mapping is a way of honoring and exploring that wisdom within her body. It requires the utmost respect, trust, and patience, as this is a deeply intimate practice meant to help her feel fully understood and connected. Start by creating a calm, safe environment where she feels completely at ease. You've already laid the foundation with the previous steps, and now, this final chapter is about deepening that connection. Yoni mapping involves gently exploring her body, focusing on her comfort and responses throughout. The goal is not just physical pleasure, but an emotional and spiritual connection that allows her to feel fully seen and appreciated. Begin by placing your hands gently on her lower abdomen, just above the pubic bone. Take a moment to connect with her through touch, allowing her to feel the warmth of your hands. From here, use light, gentle strokes to trace the contours of her body, focusing on areas that feel particularly sensitive or responsive. The Stoics believed in the power of observation, and this is your chance to be fully present with her, observing her reactions and adjusting your movements accordingly. Yoni mapping is a slow, deliberate process. It's about helping her feel more in tune with her own body, encouraging her to relax and embrace the sensations without any pressure or expectations. The key is to maintain a calm, mindful approach, staying attuned to her needs and comfort at all times. As you continue, focus on creating a space where she feels completely safe and supported. This practice is about honoring her body and allowing her to explore her own sensations in a way that feels empowering and nurturing. The Stoics believed in the importance of self-knowledge, and through yoni mapping, you are helping her cultivate a deeper understanding of herself. By the end of this practice, she should feel not only physically relaxed but emotionally and spiritually connected. The trust and intimacy you've built throughout this process will leave a lasting impression, creating a bond that goes far beyond the physical. Through patience, respect and care, you've given her an experience that honors both her body and her soul, a gift that will stay with her long after the moment has passed. By guiding her through these seven explosive moves, you have not only helped her relax and feel cared for, but also built a lasting emotional and physical connection that goes beyond the ordinary. The Stoics mastered the art of presence and intentionality, and in each step, you've applied those principles to create an unforgettable experience for her. Each touch, each motion, has been an act of care, respect, and attentiveness, ensuring that she feels valued and cherished. As she reflects on the experience, she'll remember how you made her feel, not just physically but emotionally. 
You've shown her that you're not just focused on fleeting moments, but on building a deeper connection, one grounded in mutual respect and trust. Remember to watch this video until the end, like, subscribe, and comment below if you've experienced anything similar or if these moves have worked for you. Share your story with us and let others know how mastering the psychology of women through intentional touch can create unforgettable memories. The ancient Stoics spent their lives mastering not only their inner world, but also the external, including the complex psychology of women. While their wisdom primarily focused on self-control and emotional resilience, their insights into human nature inadvertently gave them a leg up in understanding attraction and relationships. What if I told you that within the depths of female psychology lies a secret phrase or approach that could change the way women see you? By the end of this video, you'll know how to flip the script, misinterpret her actions with charm, and ultimately, drive her wild with desire. But there's a catch, this only works if you have the confidence to wield it correctly. Stick around to learn the secret Stoics themselves would have approved of in modern times. And remember, if you find this content useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below with your story or experiences. Let's dive into the mind of women and unveil this secret strategy together. Chapter 1. Flip the script, accuse her of flirting with you. The art of flipping the script is one of the most powerful psychological tools in your arsenal when it comes to interacting with women. Most men operate under the assumption that they have to be the ones to do the chasing, constantly strategizing on how to win her over, how to impress her, and how to be the one who ultimately gets her attention. But what if you turned that expectation on its head? What if you shifted the power dynamic so that she's the one thinking about how to impress you? This is where the genius of accusing her of flirting with you comes into play. It's a subtle, yet profound psychological move that completely changes the dynamic of the conversation, and here's why. Women, especially attractive ones, are often accustomed to being in control when it comes to flirtation. They know that men will naturally gravitate toward them, try to win their favor, and play into their hands. But when you playfully accuse her of flirting with you, you immediately flip the script and cause her to rethink everything that just happened. She goes from being the one who's steering the interaction to suddenly being put on the defensive, but in a playful, light-hearted way. You've thrown her off her game, and now she's curious, maybe even slightly confused. This intrigue is what will slowly turn into attraction. Imagine you're in the middle of what seems like a normal conversation. Maybe she's complimenting your shirt or talking about your sense of humor. Instead of thanking her or reciprocating with a compliment of your own, you smirk, look her directly in the eye, and say, wait a second, are you flirting with me right now? That one line is all it takes to completely disarm her. It's unexpected. She might laugh, get a little flustered, or even try to deny it. But at that moment, you've planted the seed. Now she's thinking about whether she is flirting with you. And even if she wasn't, she's now wondering why you assumed she was. This shift in her focus, from being the object of your attention to suddenly being on the spot, is incredibly powerful. This tactic works because it's rooted in the psychology of power dynamics. When you accuse her of flirting, even in a playful manner, you subtly imply that you're the one with the upper hand. You're suggesting that she's the one who's interested, and you're the one deciding whether or not to reciprocate. It changes the entire energy of the interaction, making her work to prove herself to you, even if it's just in a fun, teasing way. Women are naturally drawn to men who present a challenge, who aren't so easily won over, and who maintain a sense of mystery and confidence. By flipping the script, you embody all of these qualities at once. But here's the key, this tactic only works when done with a light, playful tone. You're not genuinely accusing her of anything, you're teasing her in a way that's fun and flirtatious. The delivery has to be smooth, almost like you're letting her in on an inside joke. If it comes off as too serious or accusatory, you risk making her feel uncomfortable or defensive, 
which is the opposite of what you want. The goal here is to create a playful, back-and-forth dynamic that leaves her wanting more. She should feel intrigued by your confidence, not put off by it. Now, let's talk about the science behind why this works. Women, like men, have a need for validation. When you accuse her of flirting, you're not only flipping the script, but also subtly validating her without making it obvious. You're telling her that you've noticed her, but you're also making it clear that you're not immediately falling into the role of a typical guy who's dying for her attention. This balance between acknowledgement and playfulness creates an intoxicating mix of tension and intrigue that many women find irresistible. Think about how often women receive compliments or attention from men. It's constant, right? So when you turn the tables and make her think that she's the one who's showing interest, you break the monotony of her usual interactions. She's used to guys bending over backward to win her over, but now she's in a position where she has to think about whether she's giving off signals and, more importantly, why you noticed. You've just separated yourself from every other guy she's talked to, and that's the goal. You want to stand out, to be memorable, and to make her think about you long after the conversation ends. This technique also builds sexual tension in a subtle, yet effective way. When you accuse her of flirting, you're introducing the idea that there's already an underlying attraction between the two of you, even if it hasn't been explicitly stated. It plants the seed of sexual tension without being overtly forward, which allows the attraction to build naturally over the course of your interaction. She's now thinking about the possibility that you might be interested in her, but more importantly, she's thinking about whether she's interested in you. The brilliance of this approach lies in its simplicity. You're not trying to impress her with fancy lines or over-the-top gestures. You're simply flipping the script, putting her in a position where she's questioning her own behavior and making her think about the possibility of attraction without being overt about it. It's a subtle game of psychological chess, and if played correctly, it can lead to her feeling a deeper sense of intrigue and curiosity about you. In conclusion, accusing her of flirting with you is a fun, effective way to shift the power dynamics in your favor. It forces her to rethink the interaction, challenges her perception of control, and introduces a playful element that can lead to genuine attraction. Just remember to keep it light, playful, and teasing. The goal is to create an engaging, flirtatious dynamic that leaves her wanting more. Chapter 2. Purposeful Misinterpretation the technique of purposeful misinterpretation is a clever and daring move that plays on the subtle art of teasing and flirtation. It's about taking something she says or does and twisting it in a playful, unexpected way to imply that she's being more suggestive than she actually intended. When done correctly, this tactic creates a mix of humor, tension, and intrigue that keeps her on her toes and deepens the connection between the two of you. Here's the beauty of purposeful misinterpretation. It allows you to inject a level of playfulness into the conversation without ever being overtly sexual or aggressive. It's a subtle dance where you're pushing the boundaries just enough to get a reaction, but never so far that it makes her uncomfortable. You're teasing her, making her laugh, and most importantly, keeping the interaction interesting. Boring is the enemy of attraction, and this technique ensures that your conversations are anything but. Let's break it down. Imagine you're talking to a woman, and she casually mentions that she loves going to the gym to stay in shape. Instead of responding with a generic, that's cool, you lean in slightly, smirk, and say, Oh, I see what's going on here. You're just trying to impress me with how fit you are. That little twist takes her innocent statement and turns it into something that could be seen as her subtly trying to gain your attention. She'll likely laugh, deny it, or maybe even play along, but regardless of her reaction, you've now added a layer of flotation to the conversation that wasn't there before. The key to making purposeful misinterpretation work is to always keep it light and fun. Your goal isn't to make her feel like you're seriously accusing her of anything, it's to create a playful back and forth that keeps the energy high and the mood light. 
If you misinterpret something she says in a way that's too serious or aggressive, you risk coming off as creepy or overbearing, which is a surefire way to kill any potential attraction. The tone should always be teasing, as if you're both in on the joke together. This technique also works because it taps into a woman's natural desire for intrigue and challenge. Most women are used to men taking their words at face value, or even worse, trying too hard to impress them with compliments and flattery. By purposefully misinterpreting what she says, you're showing her that you're not like the others. You're not just going to nod and agree with everything she says, you're going to challenge her, make her think, and keep her guessing. This creates an exciting dynamic where she's never quite sure what you're going to say next, and that unpredictability is incredibly attractive. Purposeful misinterpretation also adds an element of sexual tension to the conversation without being overt. By playfully implying that she's being more suggestive than she intended, you're introducing the idea of attraction without explicitly stating it. This allows the tension to build naturally, creating an undercurrent of chemistry that makes the conversation feel charged with energy. She's now thinking about whether or not she's actually flirting with you, and that thought alone can heighten her interest. One of the best things about this technique is its versatility. You can use it in almost any conversation, whether you're discussing something serious or light-hearted. For example, if she mentions that she's a fan of romantic movies, you could say something like, ah, so you're trying to tell me you're a hopeless romantic, huh? You're probably the type that believes in love at first sight. It's a playful twist that takes her statement and turns it into something more personal, more flirtatious, without ever crossing the line. Another scenario could be if she's talking about her love for travel. You might respond with, let me guess, you are one of those girls who takes a million photos at every location just so you can show them off on Instagram. Again, it's a light, teasing comment that misinterprets her intentions in a fun way, making her laugh and keeping the conversation lively. The key is to never be mean-spirited or too direct, always keep it playful and humorous. Ultimately, purposeful misinterpretation works because it creates a sense of challenge. You're not just agreeing with everything she says or showering her with compliments. Instead, you're playfully pushing back, making her think and keeping her engaged. This is the kind of interaction that makes her want to spend more time with you because it's fun, it's different, and it leaves her wanting more. In conclusion, purposeful misinterpretation is a highly effective tool for building attraction. It allows you to keep the conversation light, fun, and flirtatious, all while subtly introducing sexual tension. By twisting her words in a playful way, you create an exciting dynamic that makes her laugh, keeps her guessing, and ultimately, deepens her interest in you. Just remember, the key to success with this technique is keeping the tone light and fun it's all about teasing her, not making her uncomfortable. Chapter 3. Bold Compliments When it comes to compliments, most men fall into the trap of being overly generic or too timid. They'll say things like, you're beautiful, or do you have a nice smile, and while those compliments are nice, they don't pack much of a punch. What you need to understand is that women have heard these same lines a million times before. If you want to stand out, you have to take a different approach. Enter bold compliments. Compliments that are direct, daring, and speak to what you genuinely find attractive in women. Bold compliments work because they show confidence. They convey that you know what you want and that you're not afraid to go after it. Women are naturally drawn to men who display this kind of assertiveness because it signals strength and certainty, two highly attractive traits. But here's the thing, bold doesn't mean crude or disrespectful. The key is to compliment her in a way that's both daring and tasteful, leaving her flattered and intrigued rather than uncomfortable. For example, instead of saying something generic like, you look nice today, you might say something like, you have a really sexy energy about you. This compliment is bold because it goes beyond the surface level and speaks to something deeper, her vibe, her presence, the way she carries herself. 
It's a compliment that she probably hasn't heard a hundred times before, and it shows that you're paying attention to more than just her appearance. That kind of attentiveness is incredibly appealing. Another bold compliment might be something like, I love how confident you are. It's really attractive. Confidence is a trait that many women take pride in, and by acknowledging it, you're showing her that you see her as more than just a pretty face. You're recognizing her personality, her strength, and her ability to command attention. This type of compliment not only flatters her, but it also deepens the connection between you because it shows that you appreciate her on a more substantial level. Now, let's talk about the psychology behind bold compliments. Women are used to receiving surface-level praise, especially when it comes to their looks. While compliments about physical appearance can be flattering, they don't leave much of an impression because they're so common. Bold compliments, on the other hand, go beyond the physical and tap into something deeper, her personality, her energy, her charisma. These are the kinds of traits that women are less accustomed to being complimented on, which is exactly why they're so powerful. When you give a bold compliment, you're also demonstrating confidence. You're not afraid to speak your mind or to acknowledge what you find attractive. This kind of assertiveness is incredibly appealing to women because it shows that you're comfortable in your own skin and that you know what you want. It also puts her in a position where she has to think about how she feels in response to your compliment. Instead of passively accepting a generic compliment, she's now actively engaged in the interaction, wondering what it is about her that caught your attention. This creates a sense of intrigue and curiosity, which can ultimately lead to attraction. But remember, bold compliments require finesse. There's a fine line between being bold and being too forward or inappropriate. Your compliment should always be delivered with confidence and respect. If you go too far, too fast, you risk coming off as disrespectful, which will kill any attraction. The key is to strike the right balance, be daring, but also considerate of her boundaries. Chapter 4. Convey your attraction. Attraction is a game of subtlety. While bold moves have their place, there's an entirely different level of tension that can be created when you convey your attraction without outright stating it. This technique works on a psychological level, building anticipation and leaving her wondering just how much interest you really have. It's about dropping hints, alluding to your thoughts, and letting her imagination fill in the gaps. One of the most potent ways to convey attraction is by suggesting that you're having certain thoughts, thoughts that you don't fully disclose. The key here is that you're never explicit, you're creating a sense of mystery and intrigue by implying something deeper, something more sensual, without coming right out and saying it. This approach plays on one of the most fundamental aspects of attraction, anticipation. Imagine you're in a conversation that has already escalated to a flirtatious level. She's laughing, maybe she's touched your arm a couple of times, and the energy between you is undeniably electric. Instead of making a move or saying something overt, you take a pause, look her directly in the eyes, smirk, and say, you have no idea what's going through my head right now. And then you say nothing else. That silence? It's golden. It leaves her wondering. What is going through your head? Is it something dirty? Something playful? The possibilities are endless, and that's where the power of this technique lies. You've planted the seed of curiosity, and now she's the one trying to figure you out. This creates a dynamic where she's leaning in, both physically and mentally, trying to decode what you're thinking. And because you never explicitly tell her, the tension continues to build. This tactic works because it taps into one of the most powerful aspects of human psychology, the imagination. Our minds are wired to fill in gaps, to make sense of things that are left incomplete. When you allude to the fact that you're thinking something, but don't say exactly what, you're giving her mind the freedom to roam, to imagine what you might be holding back. In many cases, her imagination will take her to places far more interesting than anything you could have said outright. 
And the best part? She's the one filling in those blanks. It's a classic case of less is more. This is also an incredibly effective way to gauge her interest. If she responds to your subtle hint with a laugh, a smirk, or even an attempt to get you to reveal more, you know she's intrigued. She's playing along, curious about what's on your mind, and most importantly, she's engaged in the interaction. On the other hand, if she seems uncomfortable or uninterested, it's a sign that the conversation hasn't reached the right level of escalation yet, and it might be time to dial it back. This technique also works because it gives her the opportunity to play a role in the flirtation. You're giving her an opening to flirt back, to ask you what you're thinking, or to tease you about your vague statement. It creates a dynamic of give and take, where she's not just passively receiving your attention, but actively participating in the creation of tension. This kind of playful interaction is essential for building a strong connection and keeping the energy fun and exciting. The key to successfully conveying your attraction without saying it outright is in the delivery. It has to be smooth, confident, and, above all, subtle. If you come off too strong or too direct, it can kill the mood and make things awkward. But if you deliver the line with a smirk and then let the silence hang in the air, you create a moment that is charged with potential. It's like the calm before the storm, the quiet moment before everything intensifies. In conclusion, conveying your attraction without directly stating it is a masterful way to build tension and intrigue. By alluding to your thoughts rather than revealing them, you keep her guessing and engaged, allowing the attraction to build naturally over time. Chapter 5. Sexual Questions When it comes to flirtation, asking the right questions at the right time can create a deeper, more intense connection. One of the most powerful tools in your arsenal is the use of sexual questions, but there's a strategy to doing this in a way that escalates attraction without crossing any boundaries too early. Sexual questions should start light, playful, and innocent, and only escalate as the conversation heats up and the chemistry between you builds. The trick here is knowing when and how to introduce these questions, ensuring that you maintain the balance between intrigue and respect. To start, you want to ease into sexual questions with what I call baby steps. The idea is to ask questions that hint at something more, without being overt or forward right off the bat. For instance, you might begin with a casual question about something innocuous like PDA, public displays of affection. You could ask, so, are you the type who likes holding hands or kissing in public, or do you prefer keeping things private? It's a simple question, but it opens the door to a more flirtatious discussion. Depending on her answer, you can gauge her comfort level and decide whether or not to take things further. As the conversation continues and you feel the energy intensifying, you can begin to push the boundaries a little more. Maybe the topic of travel comes up and you casually ask, have you ever gone skinny dipping? This question still maintains a playful tone, but suggests a more adventurous, spontaneous side. If she responds positively or with curiosity, you know the conversation is moving in the right direction. The beauty of these early sexual questions is that they allow you to test the waters without diving in headfirst. You're feeling out the situation, seeing how she responds, and adjusting your approach accordingly. The key is to always maintain a light, fun tone, and to never make her feel pressured or uncomfortable. If at any point she seems to shy away from the topic, you know it's time to dial it back and return to something less intense. But if she's leaning into the conversation, laughing, and maybe even asking her own questions, you're on the right track. Once you've established a comfortable level of flotation, you can begin to escalate the sexual tension with bolder questions. These questions should still be suggestive rather than direct, allowing her to engage with them in a way that feels natural and safe. For example, you might ask something like, what's the most spontaneous thing you've ever done? Depending on how she answers, you can follow up with a more pointed question like, have you ever thought about doing something crazy, like sneaking away for a weekend adventure with someone you just met? 
This kind of progression from light and playful to more daring creates a natural escalation of sexual tension. You're building a conversation that feels organic and exciting rather than forcing the issue too soon. And by asking questions that allow her to reveal a bit more of her adventurous or flirtatious side, you're creating a dynamic where she feels free to explore her attraction to you without fear of judgment. But there's an art to knowing when to stop. Even though you're asking sexual questions, the conversation should never feel forced or overly explicit. The goal is to create tension and excitement, not to make her feel uncomfortable. The questions you ask should always leave room for her to answer in a way that feels comfortable for her, whether she wants to flirt back or keep things light and casual. The beauty of this technique is that it builds intimacy through curiosity. By asking sexual questions that escalate gradually, you're allowing her to engage with her own feelings of attraction at her own pace. This creates a powerful sense of connection because it shows that you're attuned to her comfort level and are willing to take things slow if necessary. It also gives her the opportunity to reveal more of herself in a way that feels safe and fun. In summary, sexual questions are a powerful way to escalate attraction when used with care and precision. Start small with playful, light-hearted questions, then gradually increase the intensity as the conversation heats up. The key is to always maintain a sense of fun and intrigue, ensuring that she feels comfortable and in control at all times. When done right, this technique creates a charge dynamic where the attraction builds naturally, deepening your connection in a way that feels exciting and meaningful. Chapter 6. Lead with Semisexual Compliments Semisexual compliments are a fantastic way to introduce flirtation and attraction into a conversation without being too forward or explicit. These compliments sit perfectly in that gray area between playful and sensual, allowing you to express your interest in a way that's suggestive but still respectful. It's a method that keeps the mood light while also creating sexual tension, and it's one that every man should have in his toolkit. A semisexual compliment could be something as simple as, you know, you look really cute when you wear that, or, I love how sexy you look when you're concentrating. These statements are subtle, yet they carry a level of attraction that she'll definitely pick up on. The key to delivering these compliments is the tone, they should come off as casual, almost as if the thought just popped into your head, making it feel authentic and spontaneous. Why are semisexual compliments so effective? Because they acknowledge her attractiveness without going overboard. Women are often on guard against overtly sexual comments, which can feel too aggressive or creepy, especially early on in an interaction. But a semisexual compliment slides under that radar. It's enough to make her feel noticed and appreciated without putting too much pressure on the situation. This type of compliment also gives her the chance to play along and flirt back, which is crucial for keeping the interaction balanced and fun. Here's an example scenario. Imagine you're sitting across from her, and she's doing something completely ordinary like sipping her coffee or adjusting her hair. You pause, smile, and say, I don't know what it is, but there's something really cute about the way you do that. It's a compliment that comes out of nowhere, catching her off guard in the best possible way. She might laugh, blush, or even ask what you mean by it. Regardless of her response, you've now injected a hint of flotation into the moment, making the atmosphere a little more charged. The power of these compliments lies in their subtlety. You're not being explicit, but you're also not keeping things completely neutral. It's a balancing act that allows the conversation to take a more intimate turn without crossing any boundaries. And because you're focusing on something specific that she's doing or wearing, it feels personal, like you're paying attention to her in a way that most guys don't. One of the best things about semi-sexual compliments is that they leave room for escalation. If she responds positively, you can build on that energy with more direct compliments as the conversation continues. For example, if she laughs and says something like, Oh, really? You think so? You might follow up with, Yeah, there's definitely something about you that I find really attractive. 
This allows the conversation to progress naturally, moving from light flotation to something more meaningful without ever feeling forced. On the flip side, if she doesn't respond enthusiastically, you can easily pull back and keep things playful without any awkwardness. Semisexual compliments are low risk in that sense, they are easy to deliver, but they don't commit you to a full-on flirtation unless she's ready to reciprocate. This makes them a perfect tool for navigating the early stages of attraction when you're still feeling out her level of interest. Ultimately, the goal with semisexual compliments is to create a sense of attraction that feels organic and mutual. You're not pushing her into anything or making her uncomfortable, you're simply acknowledging that there's something about her that catches your eye. And by keeping the tone light and playful, you make it easy for her to respond in kind. In conclusion, leading with semi-sexual compliments is a smart, effective way to build attraction. These compliments are subtle enough to avoid coming across as too strong, but they're also suggestive enough to create a spark of chemistry. By focusing on specific things she does or wears, you make the interaction feel personal and meaningful, giving her the opportunity to flirt back and escalate the tension naturally. Chapter 7. Playful Misinterpretation Playful misinterpretation is one of the most fun and effective ways to build attraction through banter. The idea behind this technique is simple, take something she says and twist it in a playful way that suggests she's trying to win you over. It flips the usual dynamic, putting her in a position where she's the one chasing your approval, which is a powerful way to create sexual tension and intrigue. Here's how it works. Let's say she makes a comment about her hobbies or something she enjoys. Instead of responding with a typical, straightforward answer, you tease her by misinterpreting her statement. For example, she might say, I love trying new restaurants, and you could respond with, Ah, so this whole conversation was just your way of trying to get me to take you out, huh? It's a light, teasing comment that takes her off guard in a fun way making her laugh and work to clarify her intentions. Playful misinterpretation works because it shifts the power dynamic in a way that feels natural and humorous. Most women are used to men trying to impress them, so when you flip the script and imply that she's the one seeking your attention, it catches her off guard and creates a playful sense of competition. She'll feel the need to prove herself to show that she's not just trying to win you over, which keeps her engaged and invested in the conversation. The key to making this technique effective is in the delivery. Your tone should be light and playful, never serious or accusatory. You're not actually suggesting that she's trying to chase you, you're simply creating a fun scenario where she has to defend herself in a flirtatious way. It's all about keeping the energy fun and light, allowing her to respond with her own teasing comments. Another great example, let's say she tells you about her love for traveling. You could respond with something like, Oh, I see, you're just trying to impress me with all your world adventures. It's a playful way of flipping the conversation, suggesting that she's going out of her way to catch your interest. By misinterpreting her statement in this way, you create a dynamic where she feels the need to clarify herself, often in a flirty or humorous way. This kind of banter also creates a sense of mystery and challenge. Instead of you being the one chasing her approval, she now has to work for your validation. This shifts the typical power dynamic and makes her feel like she has to earn your attention, which can be incredibly attractive. Women are drawn to men who aren't easily impressed, and playful misinterpretation is a subtle way to communicate that you are not just another guy trying to win her over. At the same time, playful misinterpretation is low risk. It's a technique that adds fun and excitement to the conversation without crossing any lines or making things awkward. If she responds positively, you can continue the banter and build on the playful dynamic. If she doesn't seem to get the joke, it's easy to shift the conversation back to a more straightforward topic without missing a beat. In addition to keeping the conversation light and fun, playful misinterpretation also gives her the opportunity to flirt back. By implying that she's trying to win you over, you're giving her an opening to defend herself in a flirtatious way, 
allowing her to take on a more active role in the interaction. This back and forth exchange is essential for creating a dynamic of mutual attraction and keeping the energy exciting. In conclusion, playful misinterpretation is a powerful tool for creating attraction. By twisting her words in a playful way, you shift the power dynamic and make her work for your approval, creating a sense of challenge and excitement. This technique keeps the conversation fun and engaging, allowing both of you to flirt and banter in a way that builds chemistry naturally. When done right, playful misinterpretation is a game changer in the art of attraction. By now, you've been equipped with some of the most powerful psychological tools for creating attraction and flipping the script in your favor. The techniques in this episode, from accusing her of flirting with you, to playful misinterpretation, to semisexual compliments and alluding to dirty thoughts, are all about shifting the power dynamic and keeping her intrigued. The magic lies in how you say things, when you say them, and most importantly, your ability to keep the interaction playful, confident, and full of tension. Women are wired to respond to emotional triggers, and these methods are all designed to subtly ignite her curiosity, making her feel as if she's the one who has to work for your approval. The truth is, most men come across as too eager, too needy. But when you master these psychological moves, you communicate that you're different. You're the kind of man who knows how to keep things fun, light, and engaging, all while building the kind of attraction that most guys only dream about. Remember, though, these techniques only work if you stay confident, relaxed, and respectful. Attraction is all about balance, keeping things intense but playful, bold but not overbearing. When done right, you'll create a dynamic where she feels deeply drawn to you, wondering what you'll do or say next. So, now it's up to you. Try these methods in your next conversation and watch the results unfold. And if you've had success with any of these techniques or have a story to share, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear how it worked for you. Before you go, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts in the comments. Let's keep this conversation going, and as always, replay this video if you want to fully absorb the psychological techniques I've shared today. Until next time, remember, the power of attraction lies in the mind, and now that you know the secret, you're ahead of the game. Keep mastering the art of female psychology, and you'll see just how far it can take you. The Stoics, throughout their long and meaningful lives, mastered the art of understanding the human mind, especially the psychology of women. Through their deep observation and introspective reflections, they unveiled hidden truths about human desires. Among these truths lies an intriguing reality, women often want things they'll never openly admit. The Stoics, known for their calm and thoughtful demeanor, recognized the importance of mastering this knowledge for deeper, more fulfilling relationships. In today's episode, we'll reveal the seven shocking things women secretly want, but will never admit. This knowledge can be your key to unlocking the mysteries of attraction, communication, and connection. Make sure to watch this video till the end, as each chapter contains powerful insights that could change the way you see relationships forever. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share your stories if you've experienced any of these revelations yourself. Chapter 1. Women want a man who is busy and occasionally ignores them. It may sound counterintuitive, but one of the most shocking things women secretly desire is a man who is genuinely busy and occasionally ignores them. On the surface, this might appear as though women want to be neglected, but that's far from the truth. What they truly crave is a man who is deeply invested in his own goals, someone who doesn't make them the absolute center of his universe. When a man is completely engrossed in his ambitions and purpose, it signals that he is of high value, someone who has something significant to offer, not only to the world, but also to her. This unwavering dedication to personal growth and success is incredibly attractive to women, as it shows that the man's life is built on more than just a romantic relationship. When a man is constantly available and overly attentive, 
it can have the opposite effect of what many men intend. Instead of making her feel cherished, it may leave her feeling smothered, or even worse, underwhelmed. The eagerness to constantly be there and shower her with attention can come across as desperate or needy. Women may begin to question the man's self-worth, wondering why he doesn't have other important things going on in his life. As much as women appreciate affection, too much of it without the balance of independence can lead to them losing respect for the man, and respect is a crucial part of maintaining a healthy relationship. This is where the concept of being busy and occasionally ignoring her comes into play. This isn't about playing games or using manipulation to create artificial distance. Instead, it's about showing that you are a man with boundaries, a man who prioritizes his personal life and goals while also making room for her in his life. The occasional absence creates a sense of intrigue, making her more curious about you and reinforcing the idea that you are a man with options, goals, and ambitions. She begins to see you as someone whose time is valuable, and as a result, she values the time you do give her even more. When a woman notices that a man has his own life outside of the relationship, she feels a sense of security. She doesn't feel like she's the only thing holding him together. Instead, she admires his independence and strength. This dynamic fosters a healthy attraction because it's grounded in mutual respect rather than dependence. Women are drawn to men who don't need them to feel fulfilled. They want to feel wanted, but they also want to know that the man's happiness doesn't hinge entirely on them. This kind of emotional self-sufficiency is one of the most attractive qualities a man can have. The occasional ignoring is about balance. It's about focusing on your career, your hobbies, your friends, and your personal growth without always making her the center of your attention. It's about showing her that you have a rich, fulfilling life and that she is a part of it, not all of it. Women respect and desire men who have a clear sense of direction and are passionately pursuing their dreams. They find this magnetic because it creates a sense of challenge. She wants to be a part of your world, but she also wants to feel like she has to earn her place in it. The Stoics, with their focus on personal discipline and inner peace, mastered this concept long ago. They believed that a man's value comes from within and that his actions, not his words, should demonstrate his worth. Stoic men didn't chase validation from others, they found satisfaction in their personal growth and resilience. In the same way, when a modern man is focused on his own path, women can sense this self-assurance. His life speaks for itself. He doesn't need to prove anything or explain his value, his busy, purposeful existence does that for him. Interestingly, the dynamic of being busy and occasionally unavailable also taps into a psychological principle known as scarcity. When something is readily available all the time, people tend to take it for granted. However, when something or someone is less available, their perceived value increases. Women, consciously or subconsciously, appreciate a man whose time is precious. They want to feel like they've earned his attention, not that it's freely given to anyone at any time. Moreover, being a busy man doesn't just make you more attractive to women, it also benefits you personally. When you are deeply involved in your own pursuits, you are less likely to become overly dependent on external validation, including from women. You'll find that your self-worth grows from achieving your goals and working on becoming the best version of yourself. This independence and sense of purpose not only make you more desirable, but also lead to a more balanced, fulfilling life. The Stoics believed in living life with intention and focus. When you apply these principles to modern relationships, the impact is profound. By being busy, maintaining your independence, and occasionally withholding attention, you project strength, confidence, and value. You show that you are a man with purpose, someone who doesn't need constant approval or attention to feel complete. And this, in turn, makes you incredibly attractive to women who crave a man with that level of self-assurance. 
Ultimately, the key takeaway is that being genuinely busy and focused on your personal goals is more attractive than constantly showering a woman with attention. It's not about neglecting her, it's about maintaining a healthy balance where you value your own time, and she, in turn, values you more because of it. Women want a man who is engaged with the world, driven by his own ambitions, and comfortable enough in his own skin to occasionally ignore them, not out of cruelty, but out of confidence. This dynamic keeps the relationship vibrant, interesting, and full of mutual respect. Chapter 2 Women want a man who isn't overly jealous. Jealousy is a tricky emotion. On one hand, a small dose of jealousy can make a woman feel desired and valued, but on the other hand, over-the-top jealousy can be a massive turn-off. Women will rarely admit this, but they secretly want a man who isn't overly jealous, a man who is confident enough in himself and the relationship to not be constantly on edge about her interactions with others. A little jealousy might occasionally spark some excitement, but too much can suffocate any attraction. A man who isn't overly possessive exudes a sense of confidence and security that women crave. When you trust her and don't obsess over what she's doing every moment she's not with you, you're essentially communicating that you're secure in yourself and the relationship. This security is extremely attractive because it shows that you believe in your own worth. A woman doesn't want to be constantly watched or questioned about every interaction with the opposite sex. She wants to feel trusted, respected, and free to be herself. However, many men fall into the trap of thinking that jealousy equals love. They believe that the more they monitor her actions, the more they show they care. In reality, it often does the opposite. Overbearing jealousy can push her away, making her feel like she's under surveillance rather than in a healthy partnership. Women want a man who is confident enough to let her live her life without feeling threatened by every male friend, co-worker, or social interaction she has. Provocatively, a man who shows no signs of being overly protective or paranoid sends an even stronger message, I'm not worried because I know that I'm irreplaceable. This attitude conveys power and self-worth. It suggests that while other men may admire her or try to win her over, you're confident that she's choosing to be with you because of your unmatched value. This confidence can be intoxicating for a woman who will find herself more drawn to a man who doesn't need constant reassurance or validation. Even more provocatively, some women may even enjoy watching their man interact with other women without showing jealousy because it reinforces his desirability. When other women show interest in him, it reminds her of the quality of the man she's with. She doesn't want to feel like she's the only one who sees his value. Instead, she wants to feel like she's chosen the best man out of a group of potential suitors. The subtle competitive edge this dynamic creates can keep her intrigued, engaged, and even more attracted to you. The truth is, women admire a man who isn't easily rattled by external circumstances. When you trust her and stay calm in situations where most men would lose their cool, you become the rare man she can truly respect. And respect is essential for deep attraction. By refusing to be consumed by jealousy, you show her that you're confident enough to handle anything, and in doing so, you create a relationship dynamic where she feels both trusted and attracted. It's also worth noting that jealousy doesn't just affect her, it affects you as well. When you let jealousy take over, you lose control of your emotions, and that's a dangerous place to be in any relationship. A man who can maintain his composure, no matter the circumstances, not only strengthens the bond with his partner, but also reinforces his own sense of power and self-assurance. Women are drawn to men who are emotionally stable and in control of their feelings. When you're the type of man who can calmly navigate situations that might provoke jealousy in others, you set yourself apart as someone who's truly in command of his life and emotions. This emotional mastery is a key component of what makes you irresistible. Instead of being driven by fear or insecurity, you're driven by confidence. You know that you bring value to the relationship, and that security allows her to relax and enjoy being with you. 
Over time, this builds trust and a deeper connection, which is far more valuable than the fleeting spark of jealousy-driven passion. In summary, women want a man who isn't overly jealous because it shows confidence, security, and emotional strength. By trusting her and remaining calm in potentially challenging situations, you demonstrate that you're not only self-assured but also someone she can rely on. This combination of trust, confidence, and composure is incredibly attractive and will make her feel safe, valued, and even more drawn to you. Chapter 3 – Women Secretly Desire Men Who Have Female Friends This may be one of the most provocative truths about women's desires, they often find men who have female friends more attractive. Although it may seem counterintuitive, a man surrounded by women signals something powerful. He's someone who understands women, someone who can connect with them emotionally, and, most importantly, someone who has been vetted by other women. This social proof can be incredibly alluring, even if it's not something women consciously acknowledge. When a man has female friends, it indicates that he's not only capable of holding meaningful connections with women, but also that other women enjoy his company. This subtle signal can ignite a competitive instinct in women, making them want to stand out or earn a more significant place in his life. Whether they admit it or not, many women enjoy the thrill of competition, especially when it comes to relationships. They want to feel like they've won over a man who other women also desire. This subtle sense of rivalry can heighten the attraction because it makes her feel like she's in a game of sorts, one she's determined to win. Additionally, a man who has female friends demonstrates that he understands women beyond a superficial level. He's likely more emotionally intelligent, able to navigate the complexities of female emotions and relationships with ease. This emotional intelligence makes him stand out from the crowd, as most men struggle to connect with women on anything deeper than a surface level. Women know that if other females are comfortable around him, it's a sign that he's trustworthy, respectful, and capable of genuine connection. In a world where emotional intelligence in men can sometimes be rare, this quality makes him even more valuable and desirable. There's also a deeper, evolutionary psychology at play here. From an instinctual standpoint, women are drawn to men who other women have chosen or approved of because it suggests that he is a safe bet. If other women have already accepted him into their social circles and trust him, it's a signal that he has qualities worth being attracted to. This concept, known as social proof, triggers a woman subconscious to view the man as someone who is worthy of attention and effort simply because others already see his value. Even more provocatively, the presence of female friends can add a layer of mystery to a man's life. It raises the question, what do these women see in him? This question can lead to curiosity, intrigue, and even a desire to get closer to uncover the answers. A woman might never admit it, but knowing that other women enjoy his company can make her want to experience what they see in him firsthand. This dynamic can increase her attraction as she wants to feel special, like she's the one who truly captures his heart. The element of mystery here is key. People are naturally drawn to things that they don't fully understand, and a man surrounded by female friends embodies that enigma. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Women understand that a man who has female friends is likely more open-minded and less rigid in his views about relationships. He's not threatened by women's independence or autonomy, and this quality is rare. It shows that he's secure in himself and can handle the complexities of modern relationships without resorting to outdated, controlling behaviors. This type of man is exciting and unpredictable, making him all the more desirable. When a man shows that he can comfortably navigate relationships with women as equals, it hints that he will be just as open and balanced in a romantic relationship. Furthermore, the fact that a man can balance platonic relationships with women without feeling the need to dominate or control them says volumes about his emotional maturity. It shows that he's confident, not clingy, and understands that women have rich, complex lives outside of him. That's incredibly attractive to women, 
who are often used to dealing with men who either misunderstand or fear their independence. When a man demonstrates that he can handle strong, independent women, it speaks to his self-assuredness, which is a magnetic quality. Another layer to this is the way it can boost his desirability in social settings. When women see a man comfortably interacting with female friends, they're more likely to think he's charming, easygoing, and likable. It creates a kind of halo effect where his social skills and ability to maintain female friendships elevate how he's perceived overall. The subtle jealousy or competitive tension that arises from seeing a man with female friends isn't just about wanting to possess him, it's about realizing that other women value him too. This recognition boosts his attractiveness in ways that can be both subconscious and direct. So, while women may not openly admit that they're attracted to men with female friends, the truth is, it can be a powerful factor in sparking attraction. The subtle sense of competition, emotional intelligence, and mystery all combine to create a dynamic that few women can resist. It's not about making her jealous, it's about showing that you're a man of value who can easily connect with others, and that's incredibly attractive. This social proof amplifies your desirability and signals that you're not just another guy looking for attention, you're someone who has already proven your worth in the eyes of other women, which makes you all the more intriguing and captivating. Chapter 4. Women secretly want quick, passionate sex as much as they want slow, romantic encounters. Many men believe that women always prefer slow, romantic sex filled with tenderness and emotional connection. While this is certainly something women enjoy, it's not the whole truth. What women will rarely admit is that they also crave quick, passionate encounters, just as much as they enjoy longer, more intimate experiences. The idea that women only want drawn-out lovemaking is a myth, and in reality, the intensity of passion can be just as satisfying for them. Women are just as capable of desiring raw, unfiltered passion as men. In fact, quick, spontaneous encounters can be incredibly thrilling because they tap into a primal side of human nature. The rush of hormones, the adrenaline, and the excitement of being overtaken by desire can be a major turn-on for women. This kind of experience can leave her feeling more desired and wanted than any prolonged, gentle session. Provocatively, many women might never admit this desire because it contrasts with societal expectations of femininity and sexuality. They're often expected to want soft, romantic gestures, but in reality, they're just as likely to want the intensity that comes with a fast-paced, passionate encounter. The idea of being taken in the heat of the moment with no time for overthinking or emotional analysis, can be exhilarating. This type of encounter speaks to a more instinctual part of her psyche, where desire takes over completely. Furthermore, quick sex can break the routine. Relationships, especially long-term ones, can sometimes fall into patterns that feel predictable. The spontaneity and unpredictability of quick, passionate sex can reignite the spark keeping things fresh and exciting. It's a reminder that the relationship is still full of surprises and that the passion hasn't faded away. Here's where things get even more provocative. The speed of the encounter doesn't detract from its emotional depth. In fact, the she urgency of the moment can create a deeper bond because it shows that your desire for her is so intense that you can't wait. This level of attraction and connection can leave a lasting impression making her feel desired on a profound level. The Stoics understood that life's intensity and passion come in many forms, and physical relationships are no exception. By embracing the idea that women want both slow romance and quick passion, you can become the kind of lover who satisfies her on all levels. It's not about choosing one over the other, it's about knowing when to shift between the two to keep the relationship dynamic and exciting. Women may not openly admit their craving for quick, passionate encounters, but when they experience it, they often find it just as fulfilling as anything else. Chapter 5. Women want a man who can flirt with confidence without needing approval. Flirting with confidence is one of the most powerful tools a man can wield, and women notice it immediately. 
However, there's a fine line between being charming and coming off as needy or desperate. Women want a man who flirts because he enjoys the interaction, not because he needs validation or approval. This subtle difference is what separates men who come across as naturally attractive from those who appear too eager for attention. When a man flirts with ease, it shows he's comfortable in his own skin. He doesn't need her to reassure him that he's desirable, he knows it. This attitude is deeply attractive because it signals emotional strength and self-worth. Women want to be around a man who radiates confidence, not someone who seeks constant reassurance. It's not the act of flirting itself that makes a man desirable, it's the energy behind it. When you flirt with confidence, you create an air of mystery, a sense that you're not trying too hard, and this drives women wild. Women also want to feel like they're engaging with a man who has options, someone who isn't desperate for their attention. When you flirt playfully, without taking it too seriously, you communicate that you're used to being around women and that you're not overly invested in any one outcome. This makes you a challenge, and women are instinctively drawn to challenges. They want to win your full attention, but only if it feels like it's something they've earned. Women appreciate when they have to work a little for a man's affection, it makes them feel more valued. Here's where things get even more interesting, many women enjoy watching a man flirt with others, as long as it's done tastefully. It shows her that other women find him attractive, and this sparks a competitive edge. She wants to be the one who holds his interest above the rest, but she won't admit this out loud. She wants to know that she's with someone who has the ability to captivate others, not a man who goes unnoticed. This can ignite a powerful attraction, making her want to stand out and be the one to truly capture his attention. Flirting with confidence, without seeking approval, also shows that you're comfortable in any social setting. Women want a man who can hold his own in conversations, who doesn't get flustered or overwhelmed when talking to other women. They admire men who can maintain their composure while being playful and charming. It's not about trying to prove anything, it's about genuinely enjoying the moment and letting your natural charisma shine through. Confidence in flirting suggests you're not driven by insecurity, but by your own sense of self-assurance, and this poise draws women in even more. Flirting isn't about manipulation or trying to win someone over. It's about showing your playful side and being comfortable with yourself. The key is to flirt with everyone in a light-hearted way, without making anyone feel like they're being singled out or pressured. When you do this, women will feel a natural attraction to you, as they'll sense that you're confident, self-assured, and not looking for validation from anyone. This behavior shows them that you're comfortable with female attention, yet not desperately seeking it. When you can flirt confidently without needing approval, women see you as someone who enjoys the thrill of connection, but doesn't rely on it for self-worth. This is the difference between a man who appears desperate for validation and a man who knows his value. Women are drawn to men who stand on their own, engaging playfully and with confidence, but never making them feel like they are the only source of that confidence. It's this delicate balance that makes flirting both an art and an irresistible tool in attraction. Chapter 6. Women want a man who can lead, but in a way that respects her independence. Women desire a man who can lead with confidence, decisiveness, and strength. But there's a catch, she doesn't want to be dominated or controlled. What she's truly looking for is a man who can take charge when needed while still respecting her independence and autonomy. This dynamic is a delicate balance, and many men either are on the side of being too passive or too controlling, not realizing that true leadership lies in understanding when to step up and when to step back. A man who leads effectively understands that leadership isn't about imposing his will on a woman. It's about guiding the relationship with direction and purpose, while always making room for her input and perspective. Women want to feel that they're with someone who has a vision and is capable of steering the ship, but they don't want to feel stifled or like their opinions don't matter. 
When a man strikes this balance, he becomes irresistible because he offers the best of both worlds, strength and sensitivity. Women will rarely admit this, but they crave the security that comes with being with a man who knows what he wants and isn't afraid to make decisions. Whether it's planning a date, taking the lead in the bedroom, or handling a tough situation, they want to feel like they can rely on you to handle things with confidence. However, it's crucial that this leadership isn't mistaken for controlling behavior. The key is to lead in a way that makes her feel empowered, not restricted. Here's something many won't openly discuss. Women often test men to see how they respond under pressure. They want to know that when things get tough, you'll be able to handle it without falling apart or becoming indecisive. These tests aren't meant to sabotage the relationship, but to gauge whether you're capable of standing firm when needed. A man who can lead through these challenges without getting defensive or losing his cool gains immense respect and respect is the foundation of deep attraction. This extends beyond mere social dynamics and into emotional resilience. When you can navigate a relationship's inevitable bumps with grace, you're proving your leadership isn't superficial, it's grounded in self-assurance. When a woman sees you calmly addressing obstacles, whether it's a disagreement or an external challenge, it reassures her that you are someone who can offer stability in a chaotic world. She feels safe knowing that even in moments of uncertainty, you'll remain collected, thoughtful and unshaken. The Stoics understood the importance of balance in leadership. To lead effectively, a man must first master himself. Only then can he provide the kind of leadership that attracts and keeps a woman's admiration. When you show that you can lead with confidence, but also have the humility to listen to her and incorporate her ideas, you become the kind of man that she feels secure with, someone she respects deeply. This type of leadership fosters a dynamic where she feels both cherished and free, which is exactly what women desire. Women want to feel like they have someone who can take the reins when necessary, but not in a way that stifles their own individuality or undermines their sense of independence. The ideal leader is someone who provides direction while making her feel like an equal partner, valued and respected in every decision. Chapter 7 Women want a man who has boundaries and isn't afraid to say no. One of the most surprising things women secretly desire is a man who knows how to say no. Many men believe that being agreeable and accommodating will make them more attractive, but the truth is quite the opposite. Women are far more attracted to men who have clear boundaries and aren't afraid to enforce them, even if it means disappointing her from time to time. A man who says no when necessary communicates that he values himself and isn't willing to bend over backward just to keep her happy. This shows self-respect and women find it deeply attractive because it signals strength. They don't want a pushover, they want someone who knows what he stands for and isn't afraid to uphold his principles, even if it means risking temporary displeasure. Boundaries create respect. When a man sets clear limits, whether it's in his time, energy, or emotional investment, he teaches the woman in his life that he won't be taken advantage of. This doesn't mean being rigid or inflexible, but it does mean having the self-confidence to protect your values, interests, and personal space. When you can stand your ground, women recognize that they're with a man who has integrity and isn't afraid to assert himself. Contrary to what many believe, saying no doesn't drive women away, it makes them respect you more. Women are wired to test boundaries. It's part of their nature to see where the lines are drawn in a relationship. When you firmly but kindly hold your ground, you show that you're not easily swayed or manipulated. This creates a dynamic of mutual respect where she knows you won't cave in just to avoid conflict. Women are drawn to this because it makes them feel secure in the relationship. They want a man who can handle himself under pressure and won't crumble at the first sign of tension. Even more, a man who has boundaries shows that he's focused on his goals and purpose. He's not willing to sacrifice everything just to please a woman, and this makes him incredibly desirable. Women want to be with a man who has his own life, his own passions, and his own priorities. 
When you say no to things that don't align with your values or goals, you reinforce that you're a man with direction, and this is a quality women deeply admire, even if they won't openly admit it. Ultimately, boundaries aren't about creating distance, they're about fostering respect. When you show that you're not afraid to say no, you position yourself as a man of value, someone who isn't easily swayed by outside influences. Women are drawn to this kind of strength because it shows that you're the type of man who knows exactly who he is and what he stands for. This level of self-assuredness is irresistible. Throughout this episode, we've uncovered seven shocking truths about what women secretly want but will never admit. From desiring a man who is busy and occasionally ignores them, to craving someone who flirts with confidence and sets firm boundaries, these insights reveal a side of attraction that often goes unspoken. But now that you know, you have the power to take your relationships to a deeper level of connection and understanding. The Stoics believe that wisdom is gained through self-awareness and mastery over one's emotions. By applying these principles to your relationships, you can cultivate the confidence and emotional strength that naturally attracts women to you. Remember, it's not about manipulation or playing games. True attraction comes from being secure in yourself, setting your own path, and allowing women to choose you because of your authenticity and integrity. So as you move forward, focus on your own growth, goals, and boundaries. The more you invest in yourself, the more magnetic you become to the women around you. If you've had experiences like this or learned similar lessons along the way, don't hesitate to share your story in the comments. Your journey could inspire others. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future content. And as always, keep mastering the psychology of attraction and relationships, you'll be surprised how powerful it can be. Thanks for watching.